Go ahead. Oh, okay. So it is 10.03, and having a quorum, I'm going to call this meeting of the City of Lebanon Solar Subcommittee to order. Um, this meeting is being held virtually via Microsoft Teams due to the COVID-19 situation, and I believe that Tad has the official text. Tad, you uh, going to read that, or are you going to put it up? Should I read it? I'll, I'll read a preamble for publicly open electronic meetings. Um, hello, uh, this is the Lebanon Energy Advisory Committee Solar Subcommittee. Due to the coronavirus pandemic and pursuant to Governor Simmons Executive Order 12, issued on March 23, 2020, in accordance with the Executive Order 2020-4, this public body is authorized to meet electronically without a quorum physically present in the same location. Please note that there is no physical location to observe and listen contemporaneously to this meeting. However, in accordance with Emergency Order 12, we have taken action to, one, provide public access to the meeting by telephone with potential additional access by video. Two, provide public notice of the necessary information for accessing the meeting. And three, provide a mechanism for the public to alert the body during the meeting if there are problems with access. Oh, okay, yeah. Uh, for this meeting, Microsoft Teams is being used as the communication platform. All members of the count, uh, board have the ability to communicate contemporaneously, and the public has access to contemporaneously listen and, if necessary, participate in the meeting by visiting 11nh.gov slash live and clicking on the pertinent listed meeting. Instructions on how to attend and provide are provided on the webpage to assist in the preparation of the meeting minutes and to ensure all participants are aware of who is participating. All speakers are asked to identify themselves and to spell their first and last name before beginning to speak. Uh, Tad Montgomery, T-A-D-M-O-N-T-G-O-M-E-R-Y. In order to ensure the best possible transmission of the meeting content, it is suggested that you disable the camera on your chosen device to reduce the video feed and increase the available bandwidth for all attendees. To improve sound quality and reduce the amount of feedback in the system, please ensure your microphones are muted unless you are asking a question or making a comment. If anybody has a problem with access during the course of the meeting, please call Ted Montgomery, 603-678-1007. Actually, no. 603-442-6140, the office line here, or email montgomery at lebanonnh.gov. In the event that there are technical difficulties and we are unable to hold the meeting, it will be adjourned and rescheduled. All votes taken during this meeting shall be by roll call vote. The meeting will begin by taking the roll call attendance. When each member states their name, please state whether there is anyone in the room with you during this meeting, which is required under RSA 91-A. Okay, at this point, the meeting will proceed according to the posted agenda. Okay, well, uh, Greg Ames, chair, I am here in the room. My wife, Jackie, is here, but she is not listening and not paying any attention to me whatsoever. So I guess we can pretend that she's not here. Uh, I'm on a headset, so she can't hear what the discussion. Next attendee. Woody Rose, member. I'm all alone. John Chaffee, member. I'm all alone. And Ted, we already know you're here. Are you alone? Yeah. I am alone. Okay, so let's move on to acceptance of minutes. Um, so we did not get the pro uh, well, so the prior meeting that we had was uh, October 1st of 2018. We did not meet uh, in 2019 except for the solar training uh, that revision gave us at the DPW office. Uh, those minutes weren't together. Uh, I didn't have them by the time we were ready to, well, I was putting up the agenda. So right now we've only got the 2018 1001 minutes to review but I would like to, uh, rather to to um, vote on. But I would like to vote on the on the uh, January minutes during the other business section. Uh, so, has everyone had a chance to read these? Can everybody see them on the screen? Yep. 
Comments, corrections? I move we accept the minutes of October 2018. I'll second. Uh, any discussion on the motion? Hearing none, uh, I'll take a roll call vote. Chair votes yes. John? John votes yes. Woody? Woody votes yes. Motion passes. Uh, okay, so let's, Tad, do we have an update on phase one? Do you know, like, any stats you want to discuss? I meant to grab, get this ahead of time. I apologize. I didn't do that. <laughs> uh, quite all right. Um, uh, no, I do not have any, any data on production. Uh, let's see. There have been some issues that have come up. Um, the solar at the police station um, no the solar on the roof of the landfill maintenance building has been interrupting transmission of uh, I, I don't know what you call it um, transmitters there are a couple of transmitters located on that roof and the solar is interrupting them. Interesting. Um, it's only affected handheld um, uh, radios that the police have when they are in West Lebanon. Their cars still operate fine. So I met with Revision and the communications guy from the police station, fire station, Doug, whose last name I don't remember, um, and a couple of folks from the landfill. Uh, and... It looks like the solution is going to be first to do a trial. Um, um, some showing up in the bucket truck and moving a transmitter some distance away, seeing if there are other places on that roof, the first side of that roof, where um, they can locate it, where it won't get the interference, and if not, how far away it needs to be moved. Uh, so that's the status on that. Uh, we're still, yeah, that's that's phase one. Anything else on phase one? I have not heard yet that the, the last piece of work to be done is hard pack pavement to be installed in the um, wastewater treatment plant where they did the trenching. And I have not heard yet if that has happened. Okay. But uh, it's supposed to happen any time now. Um, and do we have a, a timeline on the transmitter work? Uh, Doug was going to enlist a bucket truck and do that testing ASAP. I have not heard. And how long has this been going on? Has it been since they, since it went up? No, it has been since the arrays started producing sub substantial amounts of power. And oh, so it's not a shielding issue. It's an electromagnetic radiation yeah. issue. Yeah. Okay, okay. So this this is a transmitter that transmits the data from the array? No, this is a police transmitter that transmits um, radio. I, okay. So it's, okay. It's, the, it's the repeater antenna for the handheld radios. Yes. Which is okay. located at the landfill. Yes, on the maintenance garage of the landfill. Uh, and if you drive over there, you'll see them on the east, two of them on the eastern edge of that building, right up against the solar array. And you'll say, oh, yeah, duh. When you're looking at the, when you're looking at the building from the recycling center, that would be on the right side? Correct. Yeah, Basic okay. Road, which yep. Well. Um, so Steve, when he got there, said those antennas were not up there when we installed the solar. Oh, interesting. We would not have, we would have warned people if that was the case. And Doug said, you're right, they were put up February or something. Okay. Where were the, do we know where the, where they were, where the antennas were before? No, I don't. Interesting. 
I just curious if that uh, if the old site is still in place, if this was, uh, if they moved them or if this is an additional site to fill in for a communications hole. I, I didn't ask that question. I had, I had a ham antenna in my attic at my prior house and basically had to give up using that antenna after we put solar on the roof because all that aluminum up there made a very effective shield and uh, screwed up the antenna but that's sort of it that was a that was a passive thing from the that was not specific to the operation so i'm just gathering some stats here we can throw it into the uh, uh, into the minutes if you'd like or they can be in the recording for posterity so lifetime st generation at the DPW garage in admin building, 10.36 megawatt hours. DPW garage, 92.81 megawatt hours. Kilton library, 37.7. Sure, sure, sure. Minutes, so I don't even receive them. You want to put it in the minutes? If you write them down and send them to me, I'll put them in the minutes. I will do that. Uh, Kelton, 37.73 megawatt hours. Landfill recycling building, 35.53 megawatt hours. Landfill maintenance, 24.1 megawatt hours. Police, 15.36 megawatt hours. And the wastewater treatment building, 33.66. That does not include the ground mount array at wastewater. Um, that uses a... So this is data reported by the solar edge monitoring app and the ground mount system at the waste uh, at the wastewater treatment facility does not use solar edge inverters so it's not recorded that's just for the rooftop portion of, of the array at right. the wastewater um is this on track with projections Do we know uh, i have no idea i don't have that handy so i couldn't tell you so I should, uh, that is a prompt to me to reach out to revision and ask of how they are tracking and how it's been doing if they are. Yeah, that would be my, that would be, um, my suggestion. It is early. I mean, the arrays have already only been on for about six months, so, um, they may or may not, I see Clifton just joined. Uh, they may or may not have, I don't see that current information. He's listed as being in the meeting. He's muted. He shows on my uh, people list. Clifton, are you there? You're muted. I can't unmute you. Be nice to know with behind with these behind the meter sites, uh, how much of the uh, use they're accounting for. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Well, we would need we would need to look at the usage for the different sites to figure that out because all there all that all that the uh, the all that revision is going to know is total production because that's what the, that's what they are billing the city on. Right. Hey, Clifton. Clifton, you there? We can see you now. You're unmuted. Yeah. Well. Your microphone's not working. I'm trying to mute the other meeting. Hold on. There you yep. go. <laughs> he might want to hear those production numbers, Greg. Okay. And I got those out of the Solar Edge um, app on my phone. Those are based on uh, anyone who was given granted access to that can 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 see that information. So, did uh, Clifton? I don't think you were here when I read off the production numbers. No, sorry. Okay. Uh, DPW admin building, ten point three six megawatt hours. DPW garage, ninety two point eighty one megawatt hours. Hilton Library, 37.73 megawatt hours. Landfill Recycling Center, 
Uh, 35.53 hours. Landfill maintenance garage is 24.1 megawatt hours. Police station, 15.36. And wastewater rooftop system only 33.66. Um, the, as I mentioned, the ground mount system at the wastewater is not on solar edge inverters, so it's not visible in the solar edge monitoring app. It's production. Um, John, uh, Woody asked a question of how much product of that production was used on site behind the meter. And I said, we'd sort of need to look at the, uh, electric bills and the historical usage to figure that out that lib that the uh, meters at the, the the production meters only measure the amount of production not where it goes yeah I think it's it's probably really important going forward to um, get those inner uh, monthly electricity bills probably it's the um, Liberty it, well all these except for the two biggest are on um, default service mm -hmm. so we just we somebody going back to the start of production needs to take the Liberty bills and look at what's going on with um, monthly balances um, mm -hmm. uh, so we can so we can somewhat um, link the two but also begin to understand I, I we did have some estimation processes, uh, early on uh, to try to estimate. I, I, I remember, you know, analyzing a, a number of these uh, to determine whether we we're going to have significant um, monthly surpluses or not. It, do, it doesn't matter a lot on the large accounts, just the two largest ones, but I do, I do think we need to know what we're exporting to the grid each month um, and getting monetary credit for versus um, offsetting within the month. Um, I, I was just saying we need to track how much you can't hear me. No, I can you hear me? I can uh, hear you. OK, I, I was just saying um, we need to track how much um, is getting exported uh, each month and we're getting monetary credit as opposed to how much we're um, offsetting the load behind the meter. I, I, I think for the first year or two, that's an important data point that we collect and understand so we can like compare what we thought was going to happen with what's actually happened. And when we measure the prior usage, uh, how many years do you think we should average? Good question. I, t Tad, have, did anything ever happen of trying to track the uh, monthly energy consumption? Is anybody doing that for a while? Um, one of the administrative staff in DPW was doing that? Um, I have not been, um, or putting into spreadsheets. I haven't been doing any of that. I've just been so overwhelmed with everything I've been doing and then what the extra I've been given. And that, is that at this point part of your job description or not? I, it, no. I, no. I don't, think, <laughs> but I don't know who else would do it. Well, it, it was one of the original uh, stated goals for this position. Um, and and it, it, it may have been in the first version of the job description, but not the current one or something. But um, it, that was certainly one of the things was that the city needs to track its energy consumption and, and know its uh, kilowatt hour usage uh, of both an aggregate and, and by site. And, and for a while, somebody was doing that because I remember seeing um, some some data effort on that. Yeah, I think that other woman, what was her name, Tina? Ah, um, uh, yes. She I may have been doing it. Yeah. And then she left DPW. In right. any case, I mean, at the very least, we, uh, well, it's, I'm, I know I've entered data like that in spreadsheets, but but I also thought that we were getting it from uh, Freedom Energy Logistics. So so we should ask them, except they wouldn't be have it in on any of the default service accounts. So, so um, this is another Clifton of taking each of the whatever eighty five different meters and seeing how the kilowatt hour usage of each and putting it monthly into a spreadsheet. Um, 
Yeah, <laughs> that's part of the discussion in the data platform about making you know uh, making uh, it possible for customers to do that automatically. Uh, but it does occur to me that we are entitled to once a year for all of our accounts uh, for no cost a summary of our um, monthly uh, uh, consumption by Liberty Utilities. So that that's probably the easiest way to get it. Is I, is I, just. I, 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 I well, if 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 somebody is willing to work on this, maybe you could share that or put it in in a uh, OneDrive folder. Um, so I have that for 2017, 2018, or 2018, 2019. Of course, okay. I don't have it until right. the end of the year to get it to 2020. Well, we don't need it for this year yet because we're trying to compare um, this year to 2019, yeah. 18, and 17. And so, what 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 do you what format is that data in, Ted? Excel. Okay. So um, do you want to just put that, if you can put that in the um, SharePoint the, folder. Yeah, there's a SharePoint general LIAC folder. I'll yeah. And then that should be pretty easy to, to get an average usage for uh, over that time period. And then we can look at, um, we can look, get an average usage for December through May for of those years and compare it to what we see now. Um, we're okay. So a monthly average. Yeah. I think we, I think we'd have to do it by, by month because we don't have um, a full year's worth of production yet. Uh, so the one thing we're going to need is just a correlation of the meters that have solar um, with the metered accounts that are in that spreadsheet. So what data is in that spreadsheet? Just like meter number and usage? Yeah. And there's okay. like different kinds of meter numbers, like a city number and then a liberty utilities number. Or it might be an account number and a meter number. Yeah. Okay. But we actually put on, we compiled some of that for the RFP. So maybe that's, um, we, we compiled some of that for the yeah. RFP. Yeah, we did. It should be in the RFP. Including some historical usage. So that, that's the easiest place to get it. We just add 2019 to that existing spreadsheet. You know, worst, worst comes to worst, we have to go to each one of the sites and look at the meter number to correlate it. Uh, no, those are correlated somewhere. Yeah, uh, for all the solar sites, we have that. That was all in the RFP. Yeah, in the right. Denim. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Th this is Mark. The spreadsheet has an address and it has a descriptive field. So the one that we get from Liberty Utilities. So there's there's uh, several fields to connect it to the spot on the ground. Mark, how, are, how did you get into this meeting? I don't even see you here. <laughs> oh, there you are. That's how I roll. I, <laughs> I caught him. Welcome. Uh, now that you surprised the heck out of me, what is it you just said? I said the spreadsheet that we get that we've gotten in 2015 and then 2018, and it sounds like you got a 2019 one is the one that uh, they're on the hook to provide you for free, I guess, annually. And that uh, has meter IDs, it has usage, kilowatt hours, and then it has, uh, I think, an address field, and then it has like a descriptor field. And sometimes there's a few of them that are, it's not uh, necessarily clear. It might just say 255. 12a or whatever the landfills address is but in the copies that we've maintained i've updated all those so you know exactly it's this building it's this building so anyway it's a long-winded way of saying you, you can definitely crosswalk to exactly where any uh usage data is to exact exactly to any meter okay did the only thing I'd add real quickly, though, I don't recall seeing that monthly. I thought it's just a year total. To control and manage efficiently and safely. Uh, okay, I'm not finding it in my folder. I'm going to have to go hunting for it. Uh, I'm going to share this folder, Mark. Or this, uh... Right now, you've got a black screen. I can't black. see anything. 
Oh, there we go. There we go. Looks like it's by month. And what is the C column? I'm guessing that's kilowatt hours. Consumption, yep. Yeah, so maybe the one you have there has month, and then I bet the pivot results are the summary, right, for the meters? Um, I think you're looking at the entire city, not just city accounts. That That's what that document is. City of Lebanon usage data. Yeah, yeah. it's for the entire city. Uh, then let me, there was another one I had open. And this also looks like uh, municipality wide. But I'm pretty sure at the beginning of this year, I asked Liberty for yeah. uh, 2018-2019 complete data. That, that's the entire city as well. Right. Yeah. yeah. Okay, I'm going to look for it. We'd have to take time now. Okay, so why don't we move on and go to site discussions. And I've got Woody's spreadsheet open if you don't have it handy, Ted. Um, I do not have it handy. Okay, so I will share this then. Everybody see that? This is what Mark and I worked on. Can you increase the font size or just zoom out a little bit? Uh, maybe. There's also the full screen uh, function under the triple dots. Um, and when you do that, it makes it quite a bit bigger and, and you can push the images off to the side or they go away altogether. You're saying that's something that other folks can do, not me. Yeah, at this individually, yeah. you can go to full screen and it makes things more readable. And, and then you're also not viewing uh, the participants. And if, if you just move your mouse, then the uh, uh, settings bar pops up. Uh, I don't see any easy way to enlarge this. Oh, wait, there we go. Uh, maybe well, not. The last yeah. two columns, H and I, are, are thoughts that uh, Mark and I added for, this is basically an update of a 2018 spreadsheet. And the H, columns H and I are New rankings and uh, some comments that we made. So, do we want to? Oops. Do we want to sort this by rankings and go through it, or because my assumption here is that the you've categorized 99s as being airport, and you're yeah, holding I'm off on that. I'm not comfortable with what's going on in the airport. I, I really haven't. I, I don't. I don't have a grip on uh, the various opportunities up there. Um, I, I just. Uh, and and I, I do think that that's really got to be a big emphasis on phase two. Yeah. So to that effect, um, Carl Gross. Uh, is happy to meet with me and anybody from this committee next week on the 2nd, the 5th, or the mornings of the 1st and 4th to discuss this. So those time, times again? Um, 
Well, the dates are June second or June fifth, anytime during the day, or June first or June fourth in the mornings. Okay. Does how does that schedule? How does that jive with other folks' schedules? Well, who'd like to? I gotta get my calendar. Was that Clifton waving his hand? You're muted, Clifton. Hey, Clifton, we can't hear you. Thank you. I was muting. Um, yes, I'd like to be part of that. And uh, I do have some information I could share um, and talk about uh, through the share screen mode on uh, the, the, the prime site for trackers. Uh, before we have that conversation, I'd like to have another conversation about how phase two solar is going to fit into the, the city's broader electricity plans and vision. Because I am very unclear if we are going to meet our load with the current solar and the municipal or the, the landfill gas project, uh, what is all this additional solar going to, where's it going to go? Who's going to use it? How's the city going to handle it? Well, we're still quite a ways off from from um, it matching or being equivalent to the city's own load. Certainly, the landfill gas to energy will more than overdo that. So we're going to have no matter what, we're going to have surplus from that project. Um, so uh, the more surplus we have from it, the better, um, I think, because it's it, it's an additional revenue opportunity and an additional opportunity for other load to offset um, with local renewables. So. Um, you know, th this somewhat still relates back to Lebanon community power, uh, uh, you know, and the aim of having that up and running by the time the landfill gas projects comes online. But but even if that doesn't happen, it, it still, um, you know, contributes to our, you know, I just think it's part of the overall goal that we rely on as much local renewable energy as possible. And we're going to make that available to the community one way or other with or without Lebanon community power. Uh, because we can always group net metering it and, and have others participate uh, and offtake it. Do we not need to do some serious number crunching to make sure the cost of the arrays is actually going to prove to be financially well, we, better? Well, we have some sense of the cost now. Um, so we, we have to scope what specific projects we're looking at and you know what how they relate to any existing load on site. So, like at the airport, we're we're not offsetting any load up there with solar at this point. Um, My point was, if we are intending to, or have, will have the ability to meet the city's load, um, come whenever middle of next year, when the landfill gas project comes online. Um, do we not need to crunch numbers and find off takers for whatever solar we do this year um, to justify it financially? Um, personally, I don't think so at this point. I mean, of, co of course we do at, you know, at some point, but, but not before we've figured out, you know, what our opportunities are and how much that would add up to. I guess you're questioning, should we even do a phase two because we have landfill gas to energy in development? And, you know, part of the issue is that there's uncertainty about the future tax credits. There's still significant tax credit now. They're going to go down again next year. Uh, so that that's a potential lost opportunity. Um, uh, to that point, Clifton, I think that the IRS has just extended the tax credit window of this year for another year. Really? Huh. That's Have the authority idea. for that? I hadn't heard that. And of course, that could all change after the next election, but you can't really count on anything in that regard. So I'm at a, 
I, I think we have to assume, I think we should be assuming that we're going to move uh, Lebanon community power forward and um, be able to sell the off takers through that um, or through group net metering. I mean, we already know, like for the landfill gas to energy project, um, in conversations with several entities that could take 100% of any surplus we can generate there. Um, and I, so I think that's likely. We, we don't really know the landfill gas to energy numbers yet because we're still waiting for the internet connection costs to come back from uh, uh, Liberty and, and refresh over there. So, you know, I guess we could say we're going to wait till we have that and figure out if that project's still going to be economic enough that, that we find other off-takers for it, but. Do a sound check, Clifton. I, I've quit talking. Sorry? I've quit talking. I'm not I'm not speaking. Yeah, your last sentence I couldn't hear. I don't know what it was. <laughs> uh, so we should wait until the landfill gap. We have the interconnect cost from the utilities. Dot, dot, dot. Uh, yeah, before we can come up with a definitive uh, cost estimate for the cost of production of of that project. And, and I'm just saying, I don't think we want to wait for that uh, to continue to explore uh, phase two solar opportunities. So it, it look just to go back to the IRS point. It looks like what happened. What the IRS did was extend the safe harbor deadline for projects to start construction in 2016 and 2017 through to October 15th because of the pandemic and slowing of construction projects. Safe harbor 2016 and 2017. So projects that had started construction in 16 and 17 had to complete construction by a certain date to qualify for the tax credit. That date has been extended until October 15th of this year. I don't know what it was beforehand. It was <clears throat> December 31st of last year. Okay, so they have an extra 10 and a half months to get projects completed. That's kind of weird. Because the pandemic had even hit by the end of last year. I, you know, here, this is the text. <laughs> Yeah. So, so while you're looking at that, I, I think I uh, concur with Cliff's point is we're not investing much resource right now just to analyze what potential is out there for phase two, right? It's not like right. we're purchasing Agreed. anything. What, why not just continue on and see what we've got? Well, the resource we'd be investing would be uh, my time ready up in new RFP. Well, and although we did leave open the option in the current RFP or the past RFP of continuing to work with the winner of that RFP yeah. to implement. So, so we don't necessarily have to do a full additional RFP or a brand new. I mean, we could choose to do that, but, you know, and maybe your bosses will tell you we should do that. But I'm just saying we left that opening and, and Sean uh, agreed to that, that we have the flexibility of not having to issue a, a new R RFP. So that, that's a choice the city can make um, to continue working with revision or issue a new RFP. So we're, we're at the, you know, we're at the, in this meeting going to talk about two sites at the airport and uh, City Hall. And at this point, maybe we could get Woody to point out uh, on the spreadsheet, if he thinks there are any other uh, sites that that we should potentially pull into this phase of uh, of development, is that? Uh, yeah, I think there is one in particular, or probably two in particular. Uh, Cliff and I had a talk with uh, some people representing a company last week who are very interested in doing carports at the airport. Um, mm -hmm solar carports, uh, and then there's another company that approached Sean last year, end of last year, that wants to do a, I think, like a one megawatt array on a parcel that we have not even looked at yet, which maybe Mark can bring it up. It's uh, across the airport road or arc air, whatever that road is, to the west of it. On the, on the steep bank at the at the end of the off the end of the runway. 
No. Uh, well, which runway do you mean? Uh, North-South runway is that? The, 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 it's on the on the on the land heading down toward the FedEx building. Down in this vicinity. No, uh, over just to the, to the west of uh, uh, and and down below where uh, the primary site where we're thinking about trackers. That, but beside, I'm going to bring it up. Uh, everybody see it? No, I'm sharing screen. Hang on, let me give it back to you. I see a map. You see my map, not Tad's map. Oh, okay. I see Tad's map. So this is the city's GIS. And the parcel we're looking at is this one. Does it have a map lot number? It I don't see a lot number on it. I think because it. Uh, Click on it. Well, I'm trying. It's not letting me uh, on it in the usual way. Huh. It's just getting bigger. It, it also, if you could turn on the contours um, under themes or topography. I think this is a somewhat bizarre site, um, except for maybe some small portions of it. But but if you look at the building at the bottom, 130-1, which, which is a parcel number, you can see its elevation is up between 560 and 570. Well, in this parcel, um, you're... Uh, You've you're you've do have a slope right in the middle, you know, 500, 510, 520, 530, but but that's a slope um, to the to the north, um, and there there is a uh, you know a valley there where you know to the left where the 480 is, uh, but that's also a slope to the northwest. Um, I suppose at the very top of the picture between the road and, and the first uh, little drainage valley. That is maybe higher ground that's slightly south of west or slight, you know, sort of to the southwest. I guess that's where they're thinking about is on yeah. the steep part of that uh, up near the road uh, where it's where you could just almost cover the steep slope. But but what I don't understand about that, I just pointed out that the buildings to the south are up around 570 or 580 or even at the top of that bank. You know, you probably have winter shading. I'm, I'm just sort of surprised that they thought that there was enough area that could be viable there. That that parcel is part of the airport parcel. It's part of the, the runway. It's, it's divided by airport road, but it's the same map and lot. That's why it's uh, finicky when you go to select it. So Woody and I just grouped that into all of the airport holdings sort of uh you know it's it's a mini analysis itself of airport holdings mm. yeah well i think we should be looking at individual spots there when we talk with uh carl oh, oh so back to it who wants to meet with carl next week in which days and times work <laughs> And we were look. We were talking anytime the second or the fifth, and the mornings of the first and the fourth. Of course, the fifth has a CPNH meeting from the one to four. Oh yeah, fifth is a bad day. Well, I can do any of the other times. So, Greg Clifton, who else would like to? Has Clifton left us? No. I'm still here. Oh, okay. You're just on voice audio. Yeah. Um, so Clifton, Greg, who else? Okay, good. So I was so, at a meeting. So the fifth is out. Um, what were the other dates again? One uh, more time, I'm sorry. Anytime when the second 
uh, mornings on the first or the fourth? Not the fourth morning. Um, I guess the first or second would work. Okay, so why don't we go for Monday morning? Is this going to be in person or Teams? Uh, I was assuming it'd be in person. We'd go meet with him there. There's a small group. I think that's okay. We all wear masks. Uh, yeah. I've forgotten Thanks. what the meeting was. Uh, this is a meeting with Carl Gross, the airport director. Uh, I mean, we could do it on Teams if it would allow for Woody and John and others to join. I don't know if we'd lose too much. Of course, we have, we have these maps. We'd have to notice it as a uh, public right. meeting. Oh, uh, right. Well, only if we have a quorum, right? Correct. Of the subcommittee, yes. Which is three. So if it's just um, Clifton, Greg, and one other, is that a quorum? Unfortunately, yes. Three is, yes. So how would you all like to handle that? Well, it's too. If we can't do it on the first, if we're going to notice, if it's we're going to notice it as a public meeting, we don't have enough time. That's for sure. So even would, the morning as the second is dubious because they the the law is twenty four hours notice, but the city really wants forty eight hours minimum week week uh, right. business day notice. Well, we could do the following week. That might make I, I didn't get from him times, but I could make that. I could I could arrange that. Just with a doodle poll or something. Yeah. You want to do that, Todd? Because unfortunately, I don't think, you know, it sounds like only the first and the second are going to work uh, for people's schedules. And the we've, we've got if we we have too many people with um, to schedule it. We'd have to notice it. So let's let's do let's plan out for the week of the eighth, and then we can have plenty of time to to notice it. Uh, and who else would like to be on that if it's on Teams? Woody, John. I I, I can skip it. What do you, um, you like? I, I'm gonna pass. Okay, good. Uh, Mark, you want to be part of that? Uh, no, I'm I'm overcommitted. But a suggestion, I guess, is uh. I wonder if it'd be, you know, to, more efficient to at least identify some potential opportunities, you know, mark something on a map, give it to him before the meetings to get his thoughts where he can then say, oh, no, that's where our landscape and equipment's going to be stored or whatever. Rather, rather than if you just show up and you spend an hour just talking about the broad concept of putting solar on the entire airport, you know, are you going to walk out of there having accomplished anything? Whereas opposed to if you, but I don't know if it's, possible to identify some of those potential locations before meeting with him. Uh, Clifton and I have already sent him uh, a fair amount of documentation of what the thinking has been for solar at the airport. Okay, maybe you're all set. Uh, okay, good. I will make that happen. Um, And I'm also getting a sense from the committee that uh, we should move ahead on exploring this. I'm unclear yet if, uh, well, I need to talk with uh, Jim and Sean about whether we want to reissue an RFP or to continue working with revision. Um, so that is another to do for me. We went to a lot of effort to set up the possibility of not having to do an RFP. And I mean, frankly, are we going to get any more responses if we issue another, if we do another RFP? Uh, yeah, yeah, we will. Uh, the group that uh, Clifton and I met with yesterday very much wants to be able to bid on projects here. And there have been two or three others that have shown up since um, this project has started and many who were part of the the, the original RFP 
uh, we're really hoping to be able to have a second shot at it doing solar here. Okay. Um, so I, I think hybrid on other sites. I, I, I wanted to comment that a hybrid approach might make sense. I mean, maybe we don't want to lead revision on, but we certainly had revision in mind for the city hall. And, and that's still sort of integral to the charger there. So I, I, I suggest that we, you can check with the Jim and the manager, but um, that we leave open the possibility that we'll do another, another RFP. I think if we're doing another RFP, we're probably going to have to, you know, we may need to late, wait till, assume we're talking about next year construction at the earliest. Um, but in the meantime, just go ahead and explore on a preliminary basis what, in combination with City Hall, uh, might be viable for uh, revision uh, as a phase two that could be done this year without an RFP and just kind of, you know, uh, see how far that goes. I don't know. Maybe that you feel like that you just don't have the time for that um, at this point. Because revision wasn't, wasn't interested in doing uh, just – the city hall for phase two that wasn't cost effective correct yes that's what i remember what they told me is that they would need to bundle that with yeah. like i think they said at least 200 kilowatt projects at the airport 200 kw total approximately um i thought they said um city hall plus an additional 200 at the airport to keep us still with that 9.9 .9 cent ppa rate But the sense I have also is that they, like um, most other solar companies right now, are really hurting and um, have had projects canceled and are scrounging for work. Hmm. That's interesting, because if you look at their website, it seems to imply that they're not going to do any, pro any projects right now. Household projects. They're not going to go into people's houses, is what okay. I think. So residential solar. So uh, uh, while we have the advantage of having Mark here and uh, Woody's spreadsheet's gone, but the, the, just to raise the question again, are there, b besides that other steeply sloped portion at the airport, are there other sites that are in you guys' minds as being potential for including in phase two? I, I've got seven sites that I've, I've kind of uh, uh, identified. Um, go through them if you want. Yes, please. Well, there's two at the landfill um, for ground mount um, possibilities. Those uh, that narrow stretch along the road down there, uh, just between the road and there's an exclusion. Uh, area from between the river and the road but there it leaves us with a narrow area uh west of the road um i think the problem um that was identified in our first rfp and i think the problem yeah. that ruled it out was the fact that it's under um a distribution power line that the, the power lines mm. along that road run on the west side of the road and and it's, and for you know whatever reason we didn't that re really didn't register us even when we uh, put out the RFP. But once the, some of the respondents pointed it out, it, you know, and went and looked at it, it's like, oh yeah, it, you know, there's a certain setback you have to be from under the power lines. Um, and it was pretty much clear that all this really seemingly nice opportunity is precluded by. The presence of the power lines along the west side of the road. So you're, saying, you're saying there's poles on the west side of that road. Yeah, I mean, I never noticed that. Okay. We we can we can bring it up on a um, image. You can, you can see it in the. Uh, That's okay. I take your word for it. Yeah. So then, what about the two the two areas toward the north end of that road? The <coughs> one sort of low lying dumping ground. That has a lot of rock and, and junk in it. And then there was the 
the um, one one mound near the turnaround where we discussed putting putting um, solar on top of it. So there were two areas uh, there that were looked at. My recollection is that that, that those were also actually pointed out, uh, maybe by Granite State Solar, um, at, uh, or or one of the vendors that went down there and looked, and they said, "Oh, they, you didn't even identify this area, and we think that could actually work." Mm. So, so I think they're. So I think that that is something to take a closer look at, Clifton. because as I understand it, that mound which has like concrete buried in it or some some construction it has some it's not like general solid waste under that mound at the end of the road uh but my recollection at the time was that mark morgan indicated that that's not going to change so that was uh potentially viable it's it's on the opposite side of the road or well sort of on the end but um it's, it's not part of the area that in theory might in 30 to 50 years be um redone and, and now that we have a solid waste plan maybe it's worth and 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 there's some scoping of when if if ever uh sort of um re-excavating the original unlined uh landfill i mean it's covered but it doesn't have a lining on the bottom i my recollection is the presentation we just had at the city council suggested that was uh, at least 25 to 30 years in the future we have to check that but but if in fact that's the case, I mean, Mark had said, no, we shouldn't do that because we might want to, you know, uh, excavate and recompact that original landfill site. Uh, but I think the new landfill plan uh, puts that pretty far out so that you could you know, do a 20 or 25 year uh, commitment of that uh, part of the landfill for solar, on, you know, on top of the existing cap. I think, I think it's worth revisiting. So those are the, uh, and, and then there's, uh, we get down to um, uh, 11715 behind, uh, pretty much behind Timken, along the Mascoma River. Uh, there's a 2.6 acre plot. See where we're talking about. It's plot number 11715. Looks like somebody just threw up a map there. Was that you, Greg? Uh, yeah, hang on a minute. Let me try to do something here quickly. Nope, that didn't work. There we go. Hey, nice. All right. Um, behind. Which tree? Where am I? You're in White River. I'm going to have trouble unless I use the city uh, lot number. You have um, to go. Is that publicly available? Go east, young man. <laughs> it's on the yeah. side. Oh, yeah. I I'm not sure uh, Google Maps is going to give you uh, lot boundaries. It's uh, not. Can I get the city? But the city GIS does. Yeah, if you just but go. Is that is that the city public? website? Oh, okay. We'll show you how to get there. Got it. You go under um, for business, business resources. Actually, if you can scroll to the left. Right there. Yes. I, I don't, I can't scroll to the left on this. It's oriented because of the orientation that the, the, a very narrow vertical screen. It's thinking I'm on a. Uh, go ahead. Uh, it's thinking okay. I'm on a um, a phone and it's not displaying that. Got it. So now you can just zoom that. Uh, let's see behind Timken. You, you can in the quick search put in the map and lot and it will bring you right there. Okay. And while that's coming up, just before we leave the landfill, I think a. Uh, you know, what Woody and I had discussed is, you know, there's over 100 acres or so. So would the idea be, uh, you know, almost sitting down with Mark Morgan with a big map on the table and sort of go over a lot, a lot of the stuff that uh, Clifton was just describing, but, you know, kind of apply that sharper pencil to really flush out what additional opportunities exist at the landfill. And that's, 
we kind of took that same approach with the airport too. Like it was a it was a mini conversation, a mini project for each of those properties. I agree. I'd like to sit down with Mark Morgan in a minute. That's the 100 site. If you change the uh, theme to uh, the aerial imagery, it, you can see it without trees. Yeah, that's that's the one. This one? That one. Yep, yep. And the base theme instead of roadmap. Got it. Take aerial image. The Google satellite is a summer image, so so there's tree cover. So that mound is is just off to the left of that funny shape near the river. This right here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 And but also to the right of that, maybe we need to turn on topography too. But uh, to the right of that um, is also the old, the original landfill, um, which is pretty flat on top. So you know that mound that shows four hundred right foot elevation. Yeah, right there. There is a. Um, I guess. I guess the cap landfill to the south is quite a bit taller, uh, but it may not be tall enough. I, you know, you'd have to look at the shading analysis in that area. Yeah. Uh, but, but, but I think that's the capped original landfill that's unlined on the bottom. But at this point, it's so off. That was sort of ruled out early on, but it is so far off in the future that it might be viable. And, and I'm not sure why. Uh, the next cell down isn't also viable because it has been closed and, and completely capped. I'm not sure it was a couple of years ago. And where, where is that? This area down here? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Hmm. And that's pretty high. It's got great western exposure. Wasn't there some talk about putting panels on skids? Yeah, that, that's often how it's done on top of landfills. Um, even Solaflex uh, can put their trackers. They've developed a plan for putting trackers on landfills by essentially just having a big concrete base that sits just yeah. on top of the, the grass. Ballast, um, ballast system. Yeah, and, and that's that's essentially how a, a a fixed rack system would work. It would work a lot like a rooftop system, uh, just ballasted in place, just sitting on top of the soil. That's the way the Brattleboro five megawatt array happened. I think uh -huh. landfills. Yeah. Uh, so should I set up a meeting with Mark Morgan and maybe Jim Donison to go over this? I'd like to be in on that. That sounds good. And who wants to be there? What do you? Okay. Yeah, I'll if I'll I'll partake. Yeah, if Woody and Greg do that, then you don't have a quorum and you can just set that up. I'll, I'll stay off of that one. Well, that, I mean, that's really good. Is there any reason not to, if you want to be in on it, Clifton? I mean, we can no. set up, the, we can notice a meeting. It's not a big deal. Yeah. And, and I actually wonder, you know, you're, you're down in the floodplain, so there's a different issue there. But I, But I do sort of wonder... If there's the potential to do something just to the left of the green area at the base of the hill, you know, maybe maybe there was some area there as well that's potentially available. I don't, I don't think, I don't know. Mark, you might have a view on this, but it, um, who was that? Mark Goodwin. Um, I'm I'm just wondering if 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 we've if we ever got a firm grip on the uh, riverfront um, setback issue and how that plays, I know we sort of skirted it at the uh, wastewater treatment plant because mm -hmm. everything pretty much ended up just slightly above the flood elevation. Um, and, and it wasn't in the riverbank setback zone. So, I, you know, I think if, if you turned on shoreline protection or riverbank protection, don't do both at once. Um, 
Yeah, so that, I mean, the question is that dark blue, th these are different gradations of uh, set bank of connection. Um, and the question is how much, well, it's interesting because th there's a larger part of the sort of flat area that's that's got no potential use for solid waste, except that there's odds and ends still there, like, that used to be there were where there was a dancy metal processing. It used to be where area. concrete oh, block, concrete product was uh, put. Um, but but I just wonder if some of that area isn't in fact uh, potentially viable for either fixed track or even possibly trackers. I mean that mm -hmm. that is where that power line is along the edge of the road, uh, which is sort of at the top of the bank. Um, but as, as you move up towards the north end of that road it's pretty much level with the adjoining terrain off the road yep. the power line doesn't go north from the uh from that uh, pumping station does it uh, say what i thought the power line just went to the pumping station and didn't go you, you might north. be right if you zoom in you might be able to see the power line It does not appear to be at the north end of the road. Is it that black line with the dots on it? No, that's on the east side of the road. Well, some of these are contour lines. Um, no, scroll the, right scroll south. Scroll south. A little further. Huh. Uh, there's poles on both sides right there. Yeah. Yeah, and I, well, that's odd. Well, maybe there's a power line going in the other direction. Okay. I don't see it there. Hmm. I think it's just power to the pumping station. The pumping station for the leachate pumps. That's, that yeah, was yeah. my. Yeah. Well, I, I think that's also a utilities maintenance building there, that is, that has power to it. There's a couple of meters down there. So that's that's in the that's in the landfill, the purview of Mark Morgan, to uh, to really get, sharpen a pencil. And but it looks like it looks like there's area, some area on that that small mound to the west of the road, and 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 possibly uh, a large area on the on the original landfill on top of the cap. And maybe some just by the road in that sort of dumping area where we see all the junk. Okay, so we'll have that discussion with Mark. I thought we were going to go behind Timpkin along the Mascoma. Yeah, that was. Yeah. Nice. That's one seventeen fifteen, isn't it? Yes. Whoa. Oh. That doesn't look good. Yeah, well, just keep in mind uh, with the riverbank, it's, and you're right, Cliff, we, we know, I don't know if we completed the analysis, but generally speaking, the first 50 feet is your no touch zone, whether it's our local riverbank or whether it's the state shoreland, meaning uh, they don't want you to mess around with the vegetation. You, you actually can clear up to 50% of the basal area, but to keep it keep it simple think of you know if you're beyond that 50 foot line you're you're fine for our local riverbank the next from 50 feet to 125 feet is only a uh, oversight to the placement of septic systems that's all that is regulated there for the shoreland when you get beyond the 50 feet there's two other zones that go all the way out to 250 feet but it's limited to stuff like ironically enough landfills and wastewater treatment plants yeah. and uh <laughs> Yeah. So again, if you're if you're if you're envisioning placing structures outside of that 50 feet, 
I think you're, you know definitely something's in play here. I believe there's also restrictions on removal of trees too. Yes. Just mostly within the 50 feet, though. I don't know if you, once you get beyond that, I don't know if there's any vegetation restrictions. Uh, the, well, we, I saw it the last time I looked. There's there's definite restrictions on the 50 foot. There's a, definite restrictions on the 50 foot boundary. They talk about points for different size trees in 50 foot grid squares, but I believe from outside that to possibly 400 feet out, maybe it's, this is the 250 foot zone. There's also a restriction on um, impervious surfaces, percent coverage of impervious surfaces and possibly percent coverage of forests and removal of forests. You could be right. I don't. I we have a graphic at work that sort of highlights this, but uh, it's I mean, been a while. A fair, look at that. Yeah, there's a fair amount of activity that happens within, you know, outside of that 50 feet. Think of downtown Lebanon and what have you. Right. I mean, there's a fair amount of open space in here anyway. Like, I don't see a lot of trees, so. Would we need to go to get the special permits from the DES or someone to? do solar there well you may not you know that's that's i think we could we'd probably be able to do the analysis to read through the regulation and say wait a second no it's fair game outside of the 50 or not and if you're and i think if if you're not asking for like special permission heightened permission maybe you still have to apply for the permit within the 250 feet but it's just a rubber stamp process so yep. Anyhow, again, stuff to look at, but I wouldn't just because a blue shading comes up. Don't rule that. Don't rule any area out. First 50 feet, probably safe to rule out. Beyond that, I think it warrants a closer look. Is this low lying enough so that it's actually floodplain? Isn't that I what bet the that layers show? No, there's a different layer for the floodplain, but I bet that's floodplain. You can see FEMA flood zones. Turn off the first, yeah, thank you, Greg. Oh, wow. Hmm. Thanks so much. Is that still in play for uh, potential ball field development? Uh, depends who you talk to, yeah. I, <laughs> I think Parks and Rec still has it on their uh, candidate list. And then I know uh, Conservation Commission had not really been in favor of having something that a use that intense right next to the river and what have you. And uh, I think access has always been a big issue. So, yeah, same thing. This is devil in the detail. But if it sort of passes the first hurdle, then these would be some of the other questions we'd uh, be seeking answers to. Um, huh. Are we in the right spot? There's another chunk of land to the east that is actually the ball field area. What you're highlighting there is not um, actually the bigger city parcel. This is behind. This is behind suburban propane, not Timken. Right. I, so, so this is not the potential ball field or, or uh, fields site. Correct. I stand corrected. You're right. That, that that one's to the east where you're heading now. Yeah. So if you highlight. Um, up there. here, right? Yeah, that'll show the parcel. That's the parcel. You can suppress the menu on the right too. You got a big chunk in floodplain up here. What's this lot number? 7414. Yeah, and it's the reason it hasn't been on our radar screen. What do you, we don't own this. So oh. even Parks and Rec, it was 
if they could enter into a lease agreement with Tim oh, I gotcha. Yeah, I, I was wondering how Parks and Rec stepped into it. I hadn't heard about that. Yeah. So this well, is Timken owned? Uh, if you click on it, you should it should pop up. MPB Corporation. My Pretty cheap. Know where that is. I'd buy that. So that's not uh, that's not uh, up there on the list of really no. considered for phase like two. Mark but, and I said we never even looked at it. But the but the area that we were looking at previously behind suburban propane is city owned. Yes, and that's a possibility. Yes. Um, MPB Corporation is Timken Super Precision DBA Timken Timken Super Precision DBA to Timken Super Precision. Yeah, that, uh, that's Timken. Uh, okay, well, what's the next? What you, let's move what along. Uh, Mark, I I'm I'm blanking on what Tadmore OS is. This next one, 165, 31, 900. What was that Tadmore OS? Yeah, there's a, when the Tadmore, uh, or the, I think it was the Ta Townsend's did a subdivision. Um, it was called the okay. Tadmore Open Space Subdivision. Okay. So it was, it was gifted to the city as part of the subdivision. Or Oh, that's where... Yes, that's what we're. Okay, I know what you're talking about now. That's that's way up there, and we were. T there's houses all along. Um, um, there's lots all around there. We were talking about some kind of idea of community solar, seeing if we can't uh, um, get the neighbors interested in this. Yeah, there's the common access is a question. This is landlocked, so. C correct access was the uh, the head scratcher on this one. Yeah. yeah, this I didn't get as excited. On second thought, I, I wasn't as excited about this one. No, I I, I think the only excitement might have been I, I think the aspect might be perfect. That is great. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Let's have a rope that goes through it. Any case, so we can move on. Uh, I'd like to go to 108.22. That's the Prospect Hill water tank. And this is the one that mm. I think Cl Cl Cliff has already talked about it. Some different options. I think having walked his dog up there a thousand times. So is this two parcels? It shouldn't be. I think you're not, you, you've got them both as candidates. And then uh, when you select one, one becomes blue. That's the primary. So, oh, I see. Cause it's 108, 14, 22. So it's got it, got it, got it. Okay. So we're talking about this one. Yeah. All right. And I, I believe the whole Western side is North, Northeast, aspect so you'd be talking in the grassy area but again mm -hmm. I, and if not on top the tank i don't know but I, I i just recall cliff having a few ideas of maybe even calculating how many panels he would place on there if he had his way yeah i remember that discussion we got street access right here yeah that's a that's a good prospect yeah I think there's three-phase power up there, as I recall. There's a pumping station. Yep. Right where that road ends, the reservoir road, to the left of the road end. 
down at this end at the prospect street intersection no it's still or in the north the end yeah yeah right near your arrow now got it left of it yeah that's it the shadow looks like it's got a th got a three phase um pole you're right it does I want to say this three phase there. I, I've been through this before yeah. with that three phase map. That 1130. I may still have that thing somewhere. I can drop. I can drop out. Well, shall we leave that uh, question mark? I mean, I think it's worth looking at. Um, we can drop down to 84.11 and 82.11. What do you, Greg, do you want me to pull up the three-phase map? No, that's okay. Okay. I think we, we, we got to wait. We've lost Cliff. Temporarily. He left a message in the chat. Okay. Well, when Cliff comes back, we'll have some more talk about that water tank property. Eighty-four eleven and eighty-two eleven are interesting spots. Um, right out near the uh, where the river leaves uh, Lake Mascoma, East Leb Fire Station. That, that's that's the fire station there. And then eighty-two eleven is a is just a scrubby lot that John and I drove by yesterday. Um, yeah, there's two acres oh. there, and it's a beautiful, it's a beautiful aspect. And there's three phase right in that area. Mm. Definitely should be along, along the highway like that. Yeah, it slowly falls away to the to the riverbank. Yeah, that's a good location. That, um, I'm currently real excited about that. I, I, I was kind of joking that I'd go find Lee Hammond, who lives across, roughly across from that, and see if he can see it from his house. I mean, we want to know what neighbors think about out there. Yes. But you could put a lot of solar in there. How big is it? Greg, could you scan out a little bit so I can see where it's located? It's along the river. So the, it's going to impact. So it's sort of like right at the, the head end of the lake. Yeah. Right. This is. Whoops. This is the the end of the lake here. Yep. Not as I think not as many people are going to be impacted by that. Where does four A go off? It's, uh, um. That's bad. Yeah, up it's, uh, right down uh, here. Yeah, that's there's not very many people there. Uh, there's somebody up high on the other side of the road uh, on the other side of four A. I, I I just don't know. Um, how sensitive we want to be to community uh, relations there. I think we should be. Yeah. But if people buy it, that's two acres of solar. And the East Lab Fire Station is another one that uh, 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 Sean weighed in on that briefly. Uh, he, he, I guess the fire chief was saying he wanted that for storage, but then Sean was saying, well, maybe not. Um, that, that would be uh, over 411. Right in the same, right in the same area. There. Is that a, that's not an active fire station now, is it? 
I don't know what's going on there. The it, chief, the chief is concerned about it. I think it's semi-active. I think they store some equipment there, and maybe if there was a fire out on the eastern part of the city, they would activate something from there. But there's, they don't have firefighters sitting there. Yeah, okay. to my knowledge. Oh no, nobody's there. Yeah. Right. Uh, that's a kind of a prime location for some other kind of facility there that other than other than solar. Yeah. Hmm. And then the, the last uh, last parcel. Well, we've got three parcels up there by uh, Wolf Run. Um, uh, we're talking about twenty six, twenty seven. But um, we're not sure about uh, sure. whether there's encumbrances up there. And we're not. Um, these aren't these aren't don't rise to them. Greg, when you see the three candidates come up to the right, you can click on one, and that will that will select that. Oh, so, I see. Oh, okay, yeah. got it, got it. That's another way to do it. Got it. Okay. Yeah, and just to reiterate Woody's point, I think on these three, they were like, it's worth either like taking them off the list or moving them forward, but they're sort of uh just hanging out in limbo. Are those all apartments there surrounding it? Yeah. And we may have, did we get this as part of a subdivision, uh, Mark? I somewhat, yeah. I think they went bankrupt and then the city took over that piece of property. Oh, I know where this is. Okay. Oh, um, this was what's his name? Yeah. Zave Dare, maybe, or or something, something Dare. Enrique, Enrique Dyer. That's him. Yeah, I think he did Ivy Place. Any case, there's there's three up there, and then there's um, if you want to just keep going, um, there's the skateboard park down by the river. There's a narrow spot there that may be really nice. A narrow spot. Yeah, there you go. I'm uh, I'm sorry I have to leave the have to leave the meeting now, but I'll take a bye John. Bye John. Bye. Talk to you soon. Yeah. I'm I'm in the same boat. I'm gonna have to jump, but it sounds like you're in good hands. Woody I just wanted to make sure you were able to work through the spreadsheet and Woody's covering that and uh Looks like uh, Greg has become a cartographic extraordinaire with his mapping skills too. So, <laughs> so thank but you I, very much, Mark. Yeah, thank no, you. I look look forward to uh, where you end up. And at some point, it'd be good to, you know, have one master sheet spreadsheet to bring this stuff back. So if we take some off the list or if we add more information to it, so yep. keep keep me in the loop. Have a good weekend. You too. Uh, is that spreadsheet in SharePoint? Yes, it's under update. It's uh, you can see it at the top. Update two eighteen ten dash four, solar parcel. Right here. Yep, got it. Anyway, that's a that's a potential site right there. That narrow site that goes along the. Uh, um, Along the river. So I guess to go back to that prior site, the one near Wolf Run 2627, I mean, that's yeah. a great site. It's big. It's um, eight acres. Yep, you know, it's it's big and uh, it's pretty close to three phase power. I guess the question I would have is 
would the city want to do something else with that? Would they sell it to a developer for that's, know, yeah, putting that's, up housing? Right. And there's wetlands up in there. Um, and, and I don't know quite uh, just where, but but that area, the hospital's building everything it can up there. For, right. Everybody wants to put apartments up there. Yep. Um, and Sean had mentioned uh, that we should be looking at city-owned sites that the city can get rid of, sell. Right. So back to the skateboard park, I, I kind of like that spot. I don't think anybody's going to protest either. I'm not sure where the um, the uh, dam site. Um, what do they call the pipe that runs down uh, from the dam down to the hydro station? Oh yeah, what's the name for that? Um, uh, they do it. I'm not sure where that conduit is. And you were right, uh, Tad, that it is eight feet. It, it's eight feet in di diameter. I, I didn't realize it was that big, but. You didn't believe me. Yeah, I did not believe you at the time, but I've since researched it and you're right. Big pipe. Yeah. I remember uh, when they put, oh. put that thing in. Now it may go under the, it goes under the river and I'm not sure it may have gone, it may be going under the river right about there. Mm. Any case. But that's city owned land? That's city owned property. My guess is that if that's where that's, and I'm forgetting uh, the, the word we're looking for there, that's where the pipe goes. Um, then GMP, which owns that dam, has uh, a serious uh, easement on it. Sure. Yeah. Um, it's, it's and a big chunk of it's in a flood zone, too. Yeah. Or whatever that's worth. Where is the skate park? I've kind of lost it. Oh. Uh, is that right here? I see. Okay. Oh, right. That's Irving Oil right there. Right here. Okay. Yep. Oh, so we've and got. So it, I, I see. There's not much left for us. Is there? We could do trackers sort of scattered around the skate park. Uh huh. We stay out of the flood zone, no? Or, or does the tracker, you mean, assuming it's on a pole? Well, but then the conduit. Fly is going to be in the flood underneath the, the level of the floodplain. Not sure that's a problem. I think at this point, I'm guessing at this point, that pipe, that standpipe, or I mean, not standpipe, but that big conduit has gone under the river. Um, those big buildings there, that's the. Uh, that's, that's the mall, that, powerhouse that, mall. Po is that powerhouse mall? Or is it that bank, the building that that bank's in? No, oh, no, you're right. Is it? Um, how do I turn this off? I'm lost now. That's where the post office and the... Uh, Right. Yes. This because this is the post. This is yeah, 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 yeah. Benning Street. Right. 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 Post offices in this building here. Yeah. This is uh shoot. I forget who's up in there. Benning Street. Right. So powerhouse uh, is over here. Okay, that pipe is already under the river. By there, it's it's already on the uh, south side of the river. Where are the turbines? Turbines are down to the left here, uh, by the by the uh, right by the bridge. The little teeny spot right there. Right, uh, there? right there. Yep, that's where I think they are. 
River looks dry below there. Any case, uh, that's there, then there's some uh, some other sites that um, not quite. Um, I mean, we can look at 77107 if you want to keep working here. We've got uh, basically. Uh, Couple three more. Seventy-seven one oh seven. Yeah, where is that? Barrows Street. Right along the highway. Um right off the Hanover Street. Yeah. Is that, uh, where's the rail trail? Uh, uh, um, am I even in this right neighborhood? No, it's further south. Oh, 77. Down here. Um, uh, I think this is, oh, the rail trail's not running right by it? No, the rail trail's down here coming through down Spencer Street. Okay, I'm lost. This may be the spot that Sean ruled out saying it was real wet. Is that is that a trailer park in there? I can't figure out where I am. Um, show them Hanover Street, Greg. Right, so so you're coming down 120 from Hanover and you hit Hanover Street here. Right? And if you turn left, you're coming into downtown. Yeah. Down to the river, turn right. And it dead ends at the highway, and it's this lot here. Oh, oh. So on the interstate side, that's where that rest area is? Yeah, uh, very close to that. Yes. Yeah. Hello. Uh, that's a site. Uh, this is a site I'm not familiar with, and um, it could be um, it, it could be a good one. Got a nice aspect. There's just a lot mm -hmm. of clearing to be done. And I have no idea where three phase power went. I would not count on it being there. No. I mean that's a whole that's a totally residential neighborhood. I, yep. I'd be surprised if there was three phase power lines running, especially down that dead end street. In any case, that's a possibility. Unless the neighbors object, they're probably walking their dogs in there, but. It would um, also have visual impact from the highway to take out those trees and put solar there. Do we care? From the interstate? We would probably love to see that. But I think yeah. we might be the exceptions to that aesthetic rule. Mm -hmm. Why do we care? We care about aesthetics along a highway? Uh, Vermont does. Really? Okay. Oh, yeah. I never heard of that. We're in New Hampshire now. This is the different, <laughs> different ethic. Well, yeah. Okay. I mean, there's a section of. You leave this area above it. That's not city property. You leave that forested. Problem solved. But then you, you have. Know, like 50 foot setback from the tree line? Well, I don't know. 1.8 acres. So we're only talking like 150 kilowatts there. Okay. Which might not even need three phase. Depending. Um. Uh, that's a good point. Uh, next one, uh, we just weren't sure, 64-1, uh, whether um, whether it was a good idea to even think about it. Somebody else might, might uh, it's close to the high school. Hmm. Hmm. 
uh, between Heater Road and Hanover Street. Yeah, I, I don't think we want to do anything in there. It's pretty the highest and best use. Um, I, I think there's potential for a lot of development in there. Yeah, certainly. Very residential neighborhood. Um, the next one, 5031, is in the same kind of area near Genesis. Uh, it's not, um, I, I, I just wouldn't put any solar in there either. It's a car dealer up. Uh, oh yeah, 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 right. That's behind. That's this is Wilson Tire up here. Yep. Um, and it's behind. This is behind the bank building. That's. Yep. I'm surprised that's not prime real estate too. And it's wet. Oh, is it? Okay. I, I think there's wet one. There's. Um, I'm surprised we didn't pick that up. Um, you hit wetlands. Oh, yeah. I think there's all cattails in there. Yeah, that whole thing is marked as wetland. Okay, forget that. Sorry. I'm, I'm sorry. I got to take that off our list because that, uh, that shouldn't be there. Uh, this is 50, this guy. 5031. I've got it. I've got a, a uh, I've got a printout here I'm working from, and I, I I'm going to cross that off. So you want me to just delete that line from the spreadsheet altogether? I would. Uh, let me talk to Mark first. I'll tell him. All right. Oh, I've talk. marked it as wetland. So. Yeah. Good. There you go. In our comments. Yeah. 2020 analysis is a good spot for it, and then the. Um, the next one, um, I mean, we can keep going. 5042, we weren't sure that it was even going to be allowed. Um, it came as part of the boulders, I think. It's only 0.9 acres. Um, So, Tad, are you taking notes on these discussions? Uh, no, I, I don't. I, 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 I am. Notes. I'm just. Oh, okay, 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 okay. I just want to make sure that this this conversation didn't get lost. No, uh, I'm taking notes. Oh, okay, okay. Um, I have I have a list of the ones that are sort of the top candidates. Good. So, fifty forty two. I I don't think I think we should stay out of that area too. But that's. It's just, I mean, this is kind of the way Mark and I went at it. <laughs> you know, do we even belong in there with solar panels? Um, yeah. I mean, that's residential. And why is that not even developed, for crying out loud? <laughs> uh, it came to the city. Um, and, and Mark. Mark knows better than I kind of how those things happen, but as part of a development, they they give the city some of the land to be preserved. Oh, uh, okay, okay. What's that road going up there? Uh, the one in the middle of it's Wolf Road. Wolf so if you road. yeah, so if you zoom out, it runs parallel to 120. See 120 over to the right here. Yeah. They okay. come down, Wolf Road comes down and ends at Old Etna. Um, it's not like, it's not all part of Mount, actually Wolf Road is the road that, does that come down? No, 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 it feeds. Right, 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 right. It, it come, you come off this to go to up to Wolf Road. I had. I last... don't know what to think about that site. Um, it could be. It could be okay. It could not be okay. I just don't know. Yeah. What's that? What's what's that cluster of buildings to the right of it? Um, 
Here? No, down a little bit. Down one Here? more. Um, your face is in the way now. Let's see. My face is in the oh, way. Oh, there you go. What's that? That right there. Yeah, what's that property? That's... What is uh, that? It's Office Park. Um, 5016 4203. Okay. So that's on the hillside behind the office park. Right. There's yeah, a, so this is the Wolf Run Wolf Run Office Park or something. There's a bunch of yeah. buildings you can zigzag up in there. Yep. Um and then boulders. There's this odd spur of it up here. There's boulders right up there. This? That's boulders, yeah. So that's kind of on a ridge there. Yep. I remember when they built the boulders, people just freaked out when all the trees got cut down and they put those buildings in there. City of Lebanon was in shock. Now you can't see them anymore because of trees. And I kind of wonder about the same reaction, putting panels right in that other area. It's quite, it's quite visible. If you put them off in this area, um, well, we're talking. That, that's not that's not the property we're talking about. We're talking oh, about oh, you're saying if we put panels property. here? Yeah, yeah. Right. Anyway, um, we, we just weren't sure it would be allowed. Um, well, but the row of trackers there might not be too obtrusive. Uh huh. It's it's the kind of thing where you you know. If, People are are okay with it, then bingo, there's a good site. Fifty forty two. Yeah, an acre. Yep. And the last one is uh, over by Maple Street, 5919. And I don't think it, anything belongs in there. That's clearly residential. That's John's neighborhood. Oh, that is an area that the rec department has just recently sent out a notice for a meeting. I think if it's what I'm thinking about. Um, for a playground. For what? Playground. Yeah. We'll yeah. stay out of there. It's not the highest and best use. 59.19. Thank you, Ted. I'm pretty sure that's it was like a playground and parking. Yeah. yeah, I mean, you got that ball field right above it. So it seems like a natural extension. Yep. Yep, we'll stay away from there. So that's it. That's it for me. <coughs> Is that just your priority list, Woody? Um, that, that's the whole spreadsheet. That's the 33 city-owned sites that uh, that um, um, Mark and I looked at. Um, and then we ranked them. Um, and they were all... We said they were worth a site visit, uh, but I'm saying we're sort of, this committee's taking a look at it now, although we're only down to two of us, three of us. You know, one thought for that site we're still looking at there on Maple Street is, again, a row of trackers along the northern edge. might fit in well with both the ball field and the playground. Not really. All either. right. I'm going to put 59.19 row of trackers question. North edge. Yeah. But if we really want to propose that, then we should talk to the rec department pretty soon. Yes. I, I, I will uh, I'll call them. 
Ray. Um, and that reminds me that uh, Paul Coates, when I first arrived, did say he wanted to take me around and show me potential sites for solar on wrecked land. I remember that. And I haven't done it yet. Yeah. Can I? Is that is that stuff on this list, or is that not a, qualify as city owned? Is that rec department owned? Is that a different owner? Um, my guess it is city owned, and I don't know why it's not on that list. Okay. Can I adjourn just briefly? <laughs> I'll be back in a couple minutes. <laughs> Sorry. As I finally returned. <laughs> Bio break. Uh, Greg, let's go back to the one. What was the one that we really thought it'd be good to get Kirkland's input on? Uh, uh, Prospect Hill water tank. Oh, oh yeah. Right, right, um, right. What triggered? Do you know anything about what triggered DPW clearing uh, the trees that they cleared up there? I have no idea. Oh well, it's handy because they were something of a barrier. <laughs> Uh, uh, you know, shading factor. That when Solifleck looked at the site, they said, "Oh, could those trees come down?" I said, "As far as I'm concerned, but uh, but DPW already took them down." I think uh, some neighbors complained to me about this is a possible solar site because of them not wanting trees taken down with trails up there. Right, I, I don't think it's appropriate for a fenced off solar site. So um, that's partially why I don't think a fixed rack system is at all appropriate. Um, uh, but I think it's a great site for trackers because it's got some well, a pretty good year round exposure. Um, I, think, I think I actually have a picture to share to the to the north, just slightly west of the tank, there's uh, a cluster of trees shown in the in the northern field there, and um, that's all been taken down. Right along the edge of the property. Now, in the middle of the field, um, I can't point here that you can see, but um, okay. let me see if I can. I'll have to get rid of. Out of full screen. I, I got my point. My, my finger. Move up. Move me up or down. Left, right. Up, 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 up. T right to the left there. That's a clump of trees, deciduous. Yeah. Yeah. It's all been removed. Got uh, it. So that that you know when when Soliflex did a, a tracker layout, you know they kind of worked. I don't. I can't recall if they assumed that was cut down or if they worked around it. Uh, it was all weedy trees that um, had multiple main stems because they'd been cut before. Uh, so so it's no great loss, but the real point is they're gone. Um, uh, so that opens up both the north side of the site and the south side of the site potentially for trackers. And as you can see, though, there, there are some evergreens off to the uh, southwest um, and, and west. There's quite a bit of elevation difference. Uh, you can see that you know it's sort of 850 up by the water tank, and it's down around 820 uh, near the tree line uh, uh, below it. Uh, so that's that's 30 feet right there. Um, uh, and it, a lot of people do walk up there and walk their dogs up there, so it's a place where dogs can run loose uh, for a bit. Um, uh, and, and so I, I'm expressing something that's a personal preference, but also I think reflects the other people who use that and walk it because you can come up on a trail from Forest Avenue on city land, the, the Jackson property, uh, conservation property. Uh, this is not conservation property. Um, and, you know, part, part of the reason I think it's sort of ideal for uh, trackers um, is that uh, it, it, that they, you know, the top that they raise up even more, and um, and parts of it have, you know, well, it's got decent exposure all around, mainly because it's on a hilltop. Um, the 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 eastern tree line is, uh, you know, is at the same level, um, 
So, you know, but you can move away from that because you really, you know, there's not much room along the eastern uh, tree line. I mean, the eastern boundary lines, uh, but but these great big open areas are quite nice. Mm. I can't, I don't recall if Solis like did a shading analysis up there, and I haven't done that. Um, I mean, there is, you know, some eastern western horizon shading, but it's better than a lot of places in town. So my theory is trackers without a fence that you can still walk amongst. Um, uh, would It would be really nice uh, for that site. And what? there's three phase. There's three phase power uh, right there too. Sure. Um, yeah. And and a city meter, a couple of city meters. Uh, Cliff, why do the fix array need fencing but trackers not? Pardon? Why does a fix array need fencing but trackers not? Um. Uh. I think because um, with trackers, you can place all the important electronics up high enough that they're out of reach. Um, whereas, um, as near as I can tell, everybody who does fixed racks feels like they have to be fenced in for security purposes, um, but trackers are often not. Um, like that Berkshire East or West, whatever it is, ski area, as well as the uh, 14 trackers in um, Woodstock. They're completely unfenced. There's no no trespassing sign. They've been there for eight years now. Anybody can walk amongst them. Um, and it's been a non-issue. And, and when you walk up to them, there's, there's nothing within reach that you can cut or, you know, uh, electrocute yourself with, you know, ev everything that's within reach is quite secure, at least with the all earth trackers. And, and Soloflect has done the same thing. They, they don't know of barely, they said nobody fences the Soloflect trackers in that, that they know of, they, they just haven't seen the need for it. And, and so they have um, done things to deal with their uh, electrical connections to satisfy code people that, that anybody, you know, that people can walk up to these trackers. I can illustrate it with some photos. But, you know, it'd be good if Woody came back, but. Um, I'm here. Oh, he's back. That I like the idea of also planting stuff in and around trackers. Um, yeah, I like the idea of encouraging people to get in there. Yeah. It's a, it's a pretty good, it's a, it's a selling point. Yeah, and in this case, then it would mean that it's not in conflict with the other use, the, you know, the uses that are being made of that now. Um, and it makes it really easy to mow. And, and that's a place where the mowing, it, you know, all the open areas are mowed. Uh, but, um, oh, good, my other meetings. I haven't been able to be friendly. Um Um, shoot. Can I'm going to I'm going to try sharing my screen here momentarily just a second. Um, Solar proposals, solar layouts, eight miles. Okay. Um, 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 um. Now, I think what I've learned is you actually have to minimize your screen um, in order to select it with um, sharing. Um, done that and get back into Teams. Um, uh, why is it saying get the Teams mobile app? I don't need the Teams mobile app right now. Um, why isn't it doing that? I, I minimized it. I just don't see it. This is so frustrating. What are you trying to share, Clifton? Um, a screen that I have open. 
but it's not showing up amongst my um, so it might my tabs to share. Why isn't that the case? Do I have to give you permission? I don't know. Oh, I got it. You hey, getting something? Yeah, I got it. This Woodstock trackers report. Um, so can you see this picture here of of the uh, reservoir tank? I With can. This is the this is that field at the north end of the property um, with the trees having just been cut down uh, but not cleaned up and cleaned up. And um, you you can kind of see you know I, I actually have observed this on the winter solstice uh, sort of w right right here where the trees are in the foreground in front of those trees I stood there on the winter solstice around midday and the sun was just coming over the top of this uh, tank from the south. And, and hitting me in the face, standing not too far behind this fence, um, uh, sort of in this vicinity, I thought, geez, you know, you go with a tracker that goes up from where I am, and even on the winter solstice, it's clearing uh, the top of this tank. Plus, plus if, if it exists, the top of this tank on the other side also has really great exposure. And, and you can see these evergreens to the south, um, they do exist, uh, and I think what I've observed is um, <laughs> not in, in you're referring to here. I have it looks like your desktop with a bunch of file names and icons. Mm. What are other people seeing? The picture is not full screen. It's not. Why? Oh yeah, it's just. Why isn't it sharing my screen? Oh, it's so frustrating. Um, Oh, now I can do it. Greg, can now you got it. I just changed your permissions. Greg, I don't think your mic is on. Do you see a big picture of the water tank now? No. 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 I, I don't. It helps to put the mic in position. So what we're seeing is just your Windows Explorer window. It's, I think you shared the window, not the whole screen. Now I can't share. Okay, try now. Now I can. Ooh, nice. There yeah. it is. Okay, now nice. uh, that's better. <laughs> so, um, this, this is what I was trying to say. These trees came out here. Yeah. So, th this is at the north end of the site. Uh, this is a pretty big field. I think when Solaflex did a layout, I don't know if I can find that quick enough, uh, but but they had a fair number of trackers here and asked, you know, is whether these trees could come down was a key question, and they are down. This is this is very close to sunset, um, yeah. early spring. Um, and what I was saying is these trees are all the way down at the south edge of the property. Um, actually, most of them are on the Jackson Farm property that the city also owns, but um, because of the height of the land here, the, the top of that whole bank, um, when we look at the, the mapping of it, um, is is pretty well um, exposed. Uh, you know, and it's just it's just a good site. Uh, I think particularly for trackers because because um, they have the ability to follow, particularly towards the west, um, the sun until pretty late in the afternoon uh, because of the way the grade drops off. Uh, uh, fairly dramatically off to the right. I mean, it's certainly worth starting to do the solar analysis, uh, but but like I said, even though I think you could do fixed track systems here, it's just a better site for trackers if you can walk amongst them. So let me try to um, see if I can now uh, show you um, uh, some of the other uh, pictures I had that might be helpful. Okay. Um, it's not pictures, but what we want here is okay. This uh, do you see that picture of the trackers? No, not yet. 
So, uh, so I have to stop sharing and then try sharing again and then select the image. Oh, there you now go. You, now you've got it. Hi, Kim. So you can see the bottom edge of the tracker is just slightly uh, uh, below um, Kim's head level. Um, and so, so this is this open field of trackers in Woodstock. There's no no trespassing signs. There's no fence. Uh, you can actually pull into the parking lot and there's no sign that says no trespassing. It's, you know, it's right along the edge of the road at grade. You can walk off the edge of the road and just walk amongst them. Um, Looks like wires going down next to the pole there. There, there is some um, metal. Uh, it's M. It's or, or it's liquid type. It's water tight. Um, I don't know if I have a picture of the back side of them. Uh, at least I don't have it loaded. I do have such a picture, I think. Uh, but these are the same trackers that I have picture. East and west. These are all earth. These are all earth trackers. Um, Which is also what Granite State uses. Right. Yeah. That, back of, from our trip center headquarters. Solar so, so flex are smaller, so they, they end up being more closely spaced. Um, solar flex can go on a taller pole. Um, they do have the ability, uh, they, they have it tested and rated for, for a pole mount. Um, Unlike all Earth, which has said you can't really go much higher than what they're designed for because they haven't been tested for a higher height. So it looks like can and does. And what they have done is they have a hinge uh, to tip down the pole or the post uh, so that they can assemble it at grade and then just tip it up. Um, so uh, each one of these, the one thing that's interesting, they each had a little um, uh, sensor. Um, up on top of the system um, that was, I think, helping keep them oriented. And, and while uh, what we did here is we were, um, this was last fall sometime, um, we, we wanted to compare the shading of these because I got, this is where I got seven years of um, history, uh, uh, production history, hourly production history on these. Right. And uh, so I, I knew what their capacity factor is and where things sort of, uh, left off, I'll put it that way, with ever a revision is they just didn't feel like they could assume more than a 14 or 15 percent capacity factor. And I said, that doesn't make sense because we know from a seven year history um, and I actually have the eighth year in terms of annual. And what's interesting is two, 2019, I, I got permission to get 2019 hourly, but, but all Earth has been non-responsive because they're partially shut down. Uh, but um, uh, so I, but I did get 2019 uh, monthly data, and 2019 was above average year. So, um, you know, when I looked at the, the the data set, you know, there's this sort of general trend that production should slowly reduce over time. Um, but my, my only observation, you know, part of this is just the weather an anomalies, but to you don't see a real strong trend in that direction. It is true. One of their best years was one of the first two or three, but there have been strong years since as well. And, and last year was above average. Um, uh, so um, let me see if I can share more than this. Um, go up a level. Oh, um, what is this one? So that's up. Now I have to go back and tell this thing to exit out. Whoops. Uh oh, now I've lost teams. No, you're still on it. You didn't see another picture of the trackers, though, did you? Nope. No. Um, here it is. There we go. Can you see that? No. Sure you're not, you're no, you're not. You're not sharing your desktop. You're sharing individual windows. Right, and it, uh, and I have not figured out how to do otherwise um, than to um, go back and quit sharing, um, and then reshare the right thing. So when I hit the share button, 
I'm given the option of individual windows, but also the it says mm -hmm. screen. Or in my case, it's saying screen one, screen two, screen three. But and I can pick. A, I can pick. I do see appear to be able to pick desktop. Yeah. There you go. Be, there you go. That's, that's what you want. Quicker. Thank you. That's a pretty simple step. I'm glad I finally learned it. Um, so here's these trackers again. So um, again, you get a sense of the scale. You know, the, the electrical on them, um, it does run down the pole, but this is all uh, either uh, liquid tight or rigid MC. So their, their uh, inverter is right up here, you know, well out of reach, even if you had a couple of feet of snow on the ground. Um, uh, and, and so whatever electronics is going here is pretty well concealed. We, we didn't notice anything that was in, within reach other than what you might see on the side of a house. You know, th there is a, there's a little meter here and there's rigid or li liquid tight. I forget whether it was metal or, or um, the liquid tight plastic, but, but there is, uh, you know, power going up and down in communication, but it's, th then it takes off underground. Um, I would think you could put these. I would think you could put these no problem into a floodplain. Your your uh, as long as the meter or the junction box is above the bottom of the uh, is above the the floodplain the, the 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 water height. But it doesn't matter if this whole thing turns into a a temporary swimming pool. Right. I think you could bring what in this case you could probably. I don't know if this is liquid tight, but it could be made. You could you could wire it with liquid tight. Which which can go underwater, and um, yeah, I mean, I mean, any conduit under underground is is classified as a wet location by the electric code, so it's got to meet all the the wet location. So as long as you continue that up to whatever that elevation is, and and I don't, this meter seemed to be, I don't think it was, um, you know, it's not part of the pole; it's just mounted to the side of the pole, so you could even set it up higher, although it's at a eye level right now. Um, and we actually, we looked at the meters, um, or we, we took the down the, the meter number because it corresponded with the database because they gave me hourly data for all 14 trackers. And, and I was able to map back uh, which tracker, which is data. So I could sort of see the difference between the ones, obviously the ones over here got more, this is all, all, all this ridge is all to the west. And so it was blocking the afternoon uh, sun a bit and and the shading analysis clearly showed this um it was not as dramatic in um other uh directions um i, I mean to the east and they they had zero shading obviously to the south so what what we we're trying to do is here since i had the data on these and i'm going to try to bring that up in a second um uh, i can go up a level um here and I'm gonna open that file right there. And here you can just see, um, you know, where, where these sit. So this is this, uh, oops, I'm using my finger. This is this ridge here. And, and the other side of the valley is way over here. Uh, these trees uh, here, I think when we did the shading, they, they did show up. And Tim was taking shading measurements for a bunch of these, but it turns out a bunch of them um, for some reason didn't complete. Um, so, uh, but let me show you what the result of that um, was. I don't want that. Um, <coughs> solar layouts, um, shade files, go back to shade files, Woodstock tracker report, Woodstock trackers. Why is this Chrome? Why does it say it's a Chrome? Well, it's still like might come up. What What's that to the right there, Clifton? Looked like you had a file that was partially open. Click on it. Click on it again. Wait a second. Just want to see. I don't know why this says HTM. But here it is in any case. Um, so this is the, so only three ended up being good. 
So what we saw was a 94% average solar access, 96% um, May to October, and 90% November to April. So that's not surprising because this is this Western horizon, which was doing more shading. So I wanna, want you to sort of look at that image, which shows this, this uh, uh, shading. Um, this is probably just for one of the trackers. Um, and, and, and this is the actual sort of image. So it's just it's just picking up this shading on the horizon with relatively little off to the east. Um, uh, so this, this is the data set I use to model uh, comparing all Earth trackers at this airport site versus um, uh, the fixed uh, rack system that Revision had proposed and, and computed the, the values and um, the values per kilowatt hour for the tracker, you know, was much higher than for the fixed uh, rack system. Um, and, and, you know, partially because even this system with its Western shading was um, uh, um, you know, producing a fair bit um, later in the afternoon when, when you have the value of avoiding coincident peaks and higher uh, energy cost. And uh, so we wanted to compare that to the airport. So um, what I'll try to bring up next um, is the airport um, report. And <laughs> this is sort of one of my big pieces of unfinished business here, um, which is, um, you save it online somehow? Yeah. Well, I want to get Kim to correct this report. So I was really struck. I said, this this actually, you know, I, in looking at the sites, both Kim and I that day said, boy, the city, the airport site is so much better than the, um, you know, the Woodstock site, because there's so little, you know, there's virtually no shading to the west or east and, and none to the south. But then I got this back and said, oh, it's actually no better. In fact, a little worse than the other site. So I started trying to go through these and understand. Worse um, worse, but better in the summer. Now, the problem is, and you'll see it right on this image right here. And, and actually, I had the raw files. See this area over here? That's the chain leak fence. And it's showing the chain leak fence as providing 100% shading. Uh, um, and because because we did... We, we actually have a lot more data points. And um, so, oops, that's something that opened up separately. So uh, I'll just take you down to uh, when we did the sec row, which was further back, um, uh, I must be back in the Woodstock one. Damn, um, stop that, escape, why can't make that menu go away? It's blocking me. Um, Um, I guess it didn't open. I'm confused. I, my intent was to have this all set up before this meeting, but then the other meeting, I just um, didn't set up from there. Yeah. Um, solar signing, solar layouts. Try to be so tedious. Um, Cade files. Um, airport report. Oh, wait, there's the airport report PDF. That's what I was looking for. Okay, this is going to make a little more sense. And I can whip through it and just get down to the, some of the ones that we um, uh, were in that back row. Um, okay, here, here's a better illustration um, of, a, of, a, of a system. Um, and what you'll see here um, is a little bit of shading to the east and uh, virtually no shading to the west. It's actually showing uh, for most of the year um, uh, no shading to the west. So this, uh, this particular one had 90% access, 100% May through October. Um, the... Now that was the previous one. Um, um, 
Can you show us where each of these is on the site? I can't right now. Um, I do. I do have a version of that. Okay. Here, here's another one which showed annual solar access 100%, 100% in the summer, 99% in the winter, and um, what you see from the sun eye is, uh, you know, virtually no shading. Um, you know, th th these were buildings and stuff to the south, but they just dropped out of the picture. Actually, I think this is the fence once again because it's a straight because that straight line across. Uh, you actually do pick up um, uh, the, the the fence line. Uh, you know, not doing any shading. Um, so, and here's another one that's showing 100% annual solar access, 199. These these were the back row ones, and so. You know, I, I um, went to the actual, there's another version of, of um, these diagrams um, in, the, in the raw file and was able to see that a lot of the shading that they're assuming is uh, from the chain link fence. And I, I've mentioned this to Kim, but she didn't, she thought that doesn't sound right. And I said, well, because I don't think it is right. Um, but, um, uh, but I never really followed it up. I told her I'd follow up and provide a little more explanation. But one of the things I did as a result of that, um, that I was preparing last fall to talk to Kim about, is I, I went back to the um, airport and um, decided I needed to, um, uh, you know, assess this myself a, a little bit more. And it modified, get here. Um, Okay, this is this is something. A couple of things I want to show you here. Um, um, the pictures aren't showing up though. Here, I don't know where they are. In any case, um, I'll just open this one. Um, so this this is where we're taking. So the pictures that show any significant shading were all sort of in this in this where we're trying to stand here. And what I did is I went back with my um, dome shape one and was able to confirm standing on, I didn't go back behind the fence, but in front of the fence, when you stood in front of the fence, I was getting the same result. And I was getting uh, between 99 and 100% solar access. Um, there, there are a few little deciduous uh, trees along here. There's a little clump here. You assume, and that was providing significant shading that we were measuring, but we just assume those trees would go away. Um, so, and this is approximately where there's a potential building on the site. Uh, so we kind of backed off and said, you know, what, how far do you have to go away? And pretty much uh, to minimize that from an eastern shading. By, by the time you get over here, this is not even really a factor um, uh, much at all. You know, there is a ridge off to the distance, and, and that that's providing most of the shading. Uh, but but the real point I'm trying to get at is what I also observed, as you saw the height of those trackers, you know, Kim was sort of holding that at chest level to get that imagery. And that would be, you know, actually slightly below or the bottom edge of the tracker. So most of the tracker would actually above, be above the fence line. And I'm pretty sure chain link fence doesn't do maybe more than 10% shading or so. I, I yeah. tried to search for that. It, you, there's nothing, I couldn't find anything that told sh shading for a chain link fence. But the real point is, to the extent it does shade, it would be on, only on the very bottom edge of the, uh, the, the tracker because most of the tracker is actually above the height of the, tra uh, the chain link fence. Um, and, and there is a gradual, there's a ditch line on the parking lot side of this. Um, but from the on the fence side, it's fairly fat, flat behind the fence. But this starts to rise up, and there's a steeper grade, and and, and it's this line here that's the 400 foot setback from the center line of the runway, which is this sort of object free area that you can't go beyond. Uh, but but there is an FAA approved plan to put a hangar here, and looking at the plan, the back corner of the hangar is right on that object free area. And beyond the object free area, there's there's um, you know, measured at a certain distance. I think it's 250 feet from the center line. Start a, um, a, a, a slope. You know, if I was just drawing it, um, it, it would go you know up like that. And that slope, by the time you get to this line right here, is about 22 feet in height. And I sent that to the new manager, it, uh, all the explanation, and said, correct me if there's anything wrong about that. But but he, I didn't hear back from him. So. Um, 
uh, I think we were able to count uh, potentially about um, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, uh, 13, 14, 15, 16, 16 maybe inside the fence, 17, 18, 19, 20. Um, um, uh, you know, we thought maybe a few more outside the fence might be possible. Um, uh, let me see if I can't pull up um, something else that's useful to see here. Um, right. Um, I called my quick tab here. Oh, well, it's all layouts. I'll get me there. Um, here, here. Well, yeah. So th there's this sort of area where we said, um, well, first of all, there's a hangar going here. So, you know, going beyond that, but this this broad strip exists for a while. We thought, well, maybe you could put one tracker back here away from the road and still have plenty of room for the snow removal uh, that they use here. Um, what I don't have to show you, I don't think, um, is the bigger parking lot opportunity uh, um, or the parking lot opportunity. Um, Um, pictures, 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 files. Um, yeah, let me just see if I've got that. I don't, I don't think of the airport, uh, but, um, um, I think that, uh, um, area around parking, that might be it. Oh, this sort of shows it. Um, the, um, you know, what struck me, because I actually took a couple of shading analysis of this area here, and th this is where this, is that other parcel where this initially slopes down to this ditch line and then turns around and slopes back up, it's sort of a ravine there. Uh, but this drop away to the west is still rather dramatic here. Um, so I, I think I, I thought I did a layout where there's potentially room for three more trackers here. Um, uh, so, you know, it's not a huge number, but 22, 23, you know, maybe 24. Um, you, you could get a few in there. And, and then there's this, there's this parking lot sort of canopy uh, theory, um, which might have some value add proposition. You know, uh, the, the airline business has probably dropped off. But the you know part of the thought was if you could do a canopy over the at least the center part of this parking, uh, you give people a place to park. How loud? Um, you have to let the snow drop through at some points, but um, you, you could provide some. If you just covered the parking spaces and left the aisles open, for instance, you you could create shaded and um, uh, sheltered parking spaces while at the same time the snow ends up dumping in in the roadways where it can be you know, pushed, pushed away. Um, so that, that's sort of the long and short of it. So what, I, what I've been meaning to do for over eight months now, six months now is, is talk to Kim and sort of walk her through, um, you know, just see if she can ma manually update it or, um, uh, but, but the point is I, I, I found the same result, uh, which was on the order of 99% to 100% uh, solar exposure. Um, through, through the other method standing right in front of the fence, just assuming the fence is going to be a significant factor. But, you know, I don't know what, you know, canopy structure might play into that. I don't think uh, between over here or even right here and um, a canopy over here, I'm not sure it would be tall enough to interfere in, in December because that's the only thing that counts here because uh, th this is to the south. And you know, much of the time that sun is coming from the east or the west. But but the really choice thing about this whole site, um, including down here, is the phenomenal western exposure because everything drops away over on this in this area. Um, so in terms of pushing that production out to you know shortly, just shortly before sunset, because um, eventually you do hit the uh, the raise the grade on the other side of the Connecticut River is is the western horizon. It's just that it's not registering as a significant shading factor because it's so close to the horizon. So the real point is when revision was looking at this, if if you 
assume we've actually got equal or better um, exposure um, to that Woodstock site, um, then, then you're talking about a you know, much higher capacity factor than revision was assuming. Um, and, and, the, and the numbers start to make sense. I, 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 you know, I went through it with um, Dan, and, and it was true. It didn't make sense when you assume 14 or 15 percent um, capacity factor, but that's that was assuming the same capacity as for a fixed pack system. So surprise, it, it didn't um, uh, pencil out. But uh, when you get three or four or five percent more capacity factor, that that's you know another um, a third again. Uh, 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 or a quarter again, 20% more production, and, and then it started to really make sense. And, and that combined with the fact that they don't have any experience with uh, tax equity investors for trackers. Yeah, we still don't have that nut solved, do we? No, but we do have two parties that said they might be interested in that. Um, new parties, plus my old party, I haven't really talked with them about it recently. Um, there still may be interest in that. Although with this economic upheaval, there may be more people who don't have um, a, a, a tax um, liability to offset the tax credit. So, you know, I, I would guess that the universe of tax equity investors has probably uh, shrunk over the past two or three months. But, but I don't know. But the, but the good thing is that, you know, there's two others who are saying they have access to, to tax equity uh, and and they think that trackers could, could fly. If, you know, there, there's no predisposition to be in opposed to them. And in fact, the, 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 um, the investor, you know, business person, um, installer that uh, Paul Hodes is working with, he, he, He's done large scale uh, single axis tracker project, um, uh, but he was very, uh, he did report that when they talked about that the city was maybe interested in dual access, he, he, he wasn't at all hesitant as the report we got. He said, oh, definitely, we can, we can, we can definitely consider that because he understands uh, their uh, potential higher value per KWH and, and their high, higher productivity uh, per kW, they obviously produce a lot more per kW of installed uh, PV, and and I think the I think the really one of the really compelling cases for it, if if you look at time temporal value of electricity, um, which we've got to start doing, um, is the fact that um, it, it can produce uh, pretty well uh, in the winter time, much better than any fax track system be because it's it's staying. Uh, it's maximizing production every hour of the year instead of for two hours a year in terms of optimal orientation. And it can shed snow, unlike fixed track systems, even, even at 40 or 45 degrees, 40 degrees is seem to be standard around here. If you, you know, they, they dump snow reasonably well most of the time, but if you've got ice accretion, as has happened two winters in a row, followed immediately by snowfall, you know, in the same storm event, you went from a freezing rain that caused ice, uh, uh, accretion uh, probably on the surface of PV systems to snowfall, uh, even fixed rack systems at a 45 degree angle throughout New Hampshire and throughout New England or northern New England, at least wherever, wherever we had the freezing rain, uh, uh, you know, we're out of production in what turned out to be the highest, most expensive uh, uh, week of the year for electricity because um, immediately following that precipitation event, uh, you know, we've gone into uh, extremely cold high pressure systems from Canada, which were super sunny. And anybody who had a solar system and could look at it seeing producing nothing on these really uh, sunny winter days. Um, and then if they happen to look at the ISO New England prices, you're dying. It's like my system is not producing because it's covered with snow. And it's, you know, right now is the most valuable hours of the year. And what has happened and looks to be the you know continued trend is that winter extreme cold winter events, um, which are often accompanied by high pressure sunny days, um, are the highest cost hours of the year. Period. A except for those hours of coincident peak, which are actually even more valuable be because you load so much cost into a single hour, uh, both for transmission. Um, 
you know, close to half of all transmission costs are charged on just, you know, uh, 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 solar coincident um, single hours of peak production when fixed track systems, which are not oriented to optimize at those coincident peak hours, aren't, you know, have uh, limited returns. And every year that only gets more extreme uh, because of because throughout New England, nobody is putting a temporal value on the kilowatt hours produced from net metering systems. So all the net metering systems are just looking to optimize KWA rather than optimize dollars per KW or dollars per KW um, invested. And, and that's what the simple analysis using the, the uh, Woodstock uh, trackers showed is that the actual, um, you actually got more value for the dollar invested from the trackers than you did from the fixed track system, even if you didn't get quite as much production per per square foot, if you will, uh, the, the, the total value was actually greater. And when you look at the KWH produced relative to the KW, it's it's it's, it's right on the same par with, with the uh, fixed track systems. I rank mine. Yep. I should say, if you look at the KWH produced per dollar invested, it was uh, pretty much comparable. Or per, per, per for the overall investment, the KWH produced was about the same. If you use the capacity factor assumption of the Woodstock trackers, and I'm convinced this site produces even better. Um, and the one thing Kim and I couldn't an analyze, and, and it turns out um, a lot of the se second row, I think we only have one second or third or fourth row uh, tracker. Um, is there is some degree of um, shading that occurs only very intermittently, only for sometimes a few minutes or a brief period of time, and it keeps changing because the sun's you know position of the sky changes every, every day by a little bit. Uh, but um, we we were watching while we we're at the trackers in Woodstock, and we we never. We spent, I don't know, probably the better part of an hour there. And in fact, numerous times, I think those trackers reoriented every six or seven minutes. Um, you know, we, we, we noticed them multiple times all start to move. And well, they were all moving independently. So um, pretty much there was a continuous wave of one track or another every, you know, every 30 <laughs> seconds or so making a minor adjustment. Um, uh, that, that's all. You know, but 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 my real point is they stay pointed right at the sun during these hours of coincident peak, which are increasingly mid to late, uh, increasingly late late afternoon in the summer hours. Last year was f hour ending 5 p.m. And uh, you look at a fixed rack system data set, which I was just looking at last night uh, for that hour of coincident peak. And the the, you know, the solar fixed rack that was just due south or there's one somewhat east of due south it just wasn't doing that much at the hour ending 5 p.m in july uh you know the sun is almost you know getting close to due west at this point whereas this site you're aiming right at it the, the other minor thing is that we're only looking at mostly maybe two rows maybe sort of a third row a little bit if you if you go in front of the fence in a, in a few spots uh but but that lack of um sort of uh, uh, depth in the field means that the, the shading of other trackers is minimized, um, maybe. Oh, I don't know. I, I think the tracker people, from what I understand about Solarflex and All Earth, actually has a way to analyze the layout and figure out what the, what the shading factor is from tracker to tracker that you're not gonna pick up with your sun eye uh, shading analysis. Um, but, but the spacing that I had shown previously on this layout was the same spacing as used in Woodstock. And I should mention that the, um, uh, this is what's irritating, this thing is in the way. Um, unfinished. I can't go to the other tabs because of this presenting thing is in the way. Um, I guess I can do that. Go back to this. This is not, by the way, this is not the radius that the tracker uses. It's the radius um, 
that All Earth recommends. They recommend a 31 clear uh, all the way around the tracker. The actual diameter is about 21.5 feet. So this is this re these circles represent the 31 radius, and these spacings are are basically well. These are a little more, but side to side, these are the same spacing as the ones in Woodstock, and this is a little more spacing here. And these are a little more spaced. What's the extra 10 feet for? I don't know. It's just on, on their technical sheet. Uh, they say uh, plan for minimum 31 inch, 31 feet clear all around it. And uh, right. but the actual diameter is 21.5. This uh, in, it looks like you could probably do a better job packing stuff in than these circles show. Well, you certainly could, but then you get more shading between the trackers. So we well still, but still within that thirty-one foot circle, <coughs> right? No, no, they recommend more than a thirty-one foot spacing. Yeah. I um, like this is um, I don't. This is more like um, eighty foot spacing or something. Oh, oh okay, okay, okay. Um, I mean. It, if a diameter of this, these two half a diameters are 31 feet and there's a, another bunch of feet in between it. Um, no, I, I misunderstood. I thought that that 31 was the recommended spacing. No. Yeah. Okay. Okay. No, the, what I've heard from both all earth and um, solar flect is, is you, you can, you can pack them more densely uh, even with recommended clearances. It's just that you start to get more uh, tracker to tracker shading and and you you just have to figure the trade off of of slightly reduced production. The closer you put them together, you can get more production per acre, uh, for sure. Um, and, and maybe it's not in critical hours. My my guess is that that shading, it it can be an issue at the winter. You know to, you know November December January. Um, but it could also be issue other times of the year. You know if the sun's coming in. Uh, well, this time of the year, the sun comes in from the northwest at sunset, and this is the, these are high enough that the base of the trackers uh, basically level with the runway because, because there's not that much of a grade drop off here. Um, so even the base of the trackers looking off to the northwest, um, pretty much with full exposure. Uh, so as the sun is setting, you know, from this angle, th this tracker may actually shade this tracker. Mm -hmm. um, uh, so, so if you had a tracker, you know, right in here, it would be more shaded by this tracker uh, when the sun's right at that angle. But, but a few minutes later, um, this one's no longer shading this one. In fact, you know, a little later, this one is maybe shading this, but maybe the sun's high enough. You have to simulate it. By, you know, we have to get one of the vendors involved to do an actual layout and and uh, simulate it. Mm -hmm. So I, I just I need to go back to Kim because people like the sun eye data um, and see if she can um, tell it treat the uh, chain link fence as, as um, a non shaded area. Clifton, one of the thoughts that we had was to um, see if we couldn't get uh, revision to act as the uh, general project contractor and uh, hired Granite State under them to do the installs or something like that. Yep. I, you know, it, in thinking about how to move forward, oh gosh, it's almost, uh, we're approaching one o'clock, so we should end. Um, but, um, and thinking about the way forward, I think another question you might ask Sean and Jim is as we explore our options, uh, could we talk with revision about the idea of them um, managing the development of this project, but perhaps bidding out um, the tracker, uh, you know, sort of subcontracting or, or sub bidding between all Earth Tracker and Soloflex, uh, where they actually got a proposal. You know, we we work with uh, revision for the tax equity financing. That you know, financing of it. Um, uh, but but possibly Soloflex or All Earth would do the 
you know, do the proposal and installation since they have know how to do it. I think, you know, one thing we learned from all Earth is the reason they felt that they could be so aggressive in their pricing is they could because they have this specialized um, equipment that they've invested in for the uh, <laughs> helix screw, earth screw, um, where instead of digging out and pouring a concrete foundation, they put this screw that's driven driven into the earth that they can mount right on top of and my suspicion is this site is probably good for it because i think this is all uh fell probably even engineered fell to some extent when they built the airport so it's it, there's probably no bedrock or large glacial uh erratics boulders under this um so you and, and they, I recall them saying that that definitely went wherever they can use those, they like to use them because it reduces the cost of the project compared to um, digging a hole and pouring concrete. This was GSS said this, right? Yes, yes. Yeah. They have a, yeah, they have a specialized piece of hydraulic equipment that goes, I think, I think they said on the, on the end of a it's backhoe. On a, uh, they put it on a, on a bobcat, on a skid steer. Well, yeah. there's there's what revision did, which is sort of driving the racking system into the ground. That's also done that way, but they they can drive their uh, earth screw into the ground to mount the uh, track onto. Yeah, I thought I thought I'd heard you say all earth. Yeah, this. all earth has the all earth has that uh, the earth screw approach. Right? No, that only that works does. where you don't have um, bedrock or uh, boulders. GSS does. Yes. For installing all Earth trackers. Yes. Yeah. That's what I meant. I, I think all Earth themselves may have that too. I don't know what if they, they do have, yeah. installation or what. Uh, but 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 the, I think I think they said the idea came from all Earth. I mean, it was one of the th ways that all Earth figured out how to do the installation. Right. Right. I don't think Solarflex was aware of that uh, approach, but they weren't. They last I talked to Bill Bender, they weren't doing it. So I'll try to work and go ahead and follow up and Kim to see if we can get um, if she can modify the sun eye or if she agrees with my analysis because because when it, it was some of this you know we were trying I didn't have this layout or maybe I did oh that's why these numbers are here by the way these numbers are the approximate location of where we took readings that's what those numbers mean oh, okay. so they're not a count of the number of trackers because we did end up with I think 13 or so in, in the report um, that we were looking at. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> oh, that's the Woodstock one. Oh, that's the HTM version. And I, I, I don't, oh, the other thing I could do, which I should do, is um, Li Liberty's refreshed its uh, time of use rates for um, the battery pilot and EV uh, based on more, you know, the updated data. Uh, so I could put those in because that's, that's sort of, that was one of the two ways I um, tried to measure the proxy of the, the time value of the uh, potential um, um, of, of the value of the kilowatt hours by just putting it into the uh, time of use rates, which are cost causation based um, compared to the fixed track system. And that's what we got. Yeah, so you know, part of that shading issue is um, that this is sort of to the east over here, but in the summertime, the sun actually rises in this site to the north east um and so this time of year the sun would pop up you know somewhere along this very distant horizon which is which is quite that that's why we're getting less than a half percent annual shading uh, from this whole uh eastern horizon and basically zero percent shading on the western horizon. the former airport manager was concerned that this ditch has been classified as a wetland but i I can't see the issue. <laughs> no, yeah, that's that's clearly an error. <laughs> uh, well, it depends on what plants are growing there. Um, we'll Nothing a little Roundup can't fix. 
Well, whether it is or it isn't, the, the point is trackers didn't need to go there. Yeah, yeah. Um, trackers what? That's when you blacked out. Don't need to go in the ditch. You know, if you're going to do anything there, you could put them on, on um, you know, towards the street side of the ditch. And, and the fence. Yeah, and the inside the fence is great uh, for that site. But, but based on the experience of others, uh, you know, I, I think these can be freestanding without a fence. And if it's a site where we could actually have some monitored surveillance, that'd be great. But um, Woodstock has no monitored surveillance. Uh, you know, it's... And there's actually nobody real nearby. I mean, if somebody wanted to drive there in the middle of the night, um, I'm sure you know they could and probably be unnoticed. Um, it's just just not has not been an issue. Gentlemen, this has been almost a three hour meeting. Um, okay. I need to sign off. Um, bef am, I, am I on? Yes, I am. Um, before we go, uh, can we just uh, touch on the second set of minutes under other business? Oh, yeah. Want me to bring those up? Sure. This is the January, right? Correct. Um, if I'm still sharing, you th are. This, is, this is one of these um, uh, solar things right um, uh, in front of the fence, the, sh the shading. And so what you can see is there's that uh, um, eastern horizon, um, in that sort of hill. Uh, and this is where you, you can see, it, um, you know, th that's, that's where the shading is. And um, this, this small amount of shading over here, because it's all pretty much in the last hour, you know, it kind of diminishes in the summertime to virtually nothing. Um, uh, uh, That's an so, screen. Oh, okay. Well, oh well. I give up. Time to wrap up, anyways. Chad pulled the plug on your. Oh, that's why. Okay. Do you have the minutes, Tad? Uh, yeah, I thought I pulled them up. Can people? There we are. Yep. 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 So I sent these out. They were not forwarded by Ann, but I did send them out. So hopefully folks have had a chance to look at them. Uh, this is Tad's notes on the solar, the solar uh, presentation by revision <clears throat> on the, when they talked about the, uh, gave us the rundown on the systems and gave us the demo of uh, the solar edge reporting software. I, this is accurate, but um, out of curiosity, have you heard back from Revision on access uh, for the uh, Locus data? I have not. You mean the ground mount at the wastewater? Yeah. Not yet, no. That, that, that's an important one to see because we, we want to look at some art. Well, I don't know if it gives us hourly data. It should, but um, it's, it would be good to compare that against the, um, <coughs> the load at the plant since we do have hourly load at that plant. I move to approve the minutes of the um, January 13th, was it? Um, yes. LEAC Solar Subcommittee meeting, which was actually a, a solar monitor training with Revision Energy, but those are the minutes because it was a, technically a meeting. I'll second. Okay, any discussion? Um, I think John, Dan No is to be Dan Knox. Or, Hold on a sec. Or Dan is somebody else. It was probably Dan Knox. Yes, oh, Dan Knox. It was Dan. It, it was. It was. Wastewater. 
Ted, do you want me to? Cr- I'll make that correction to the final and send it in. Wonderful. Okay. Uh, any other comments? Roll call vote. Hearing none, roll call vote. Greg Ames votes yes. Woody Clifton yes. Mila votes yes. Woody yes. Uh, every motion passes unanimously. Any other business? Move to adjourn. Uh, wait, should we go through the to-do list? To-do list. Uh, uh, yeah. Probably all we need. Yeah, we probably don't need it. I mean, I'm going to set up a meeting with Carl at the airport for the week of the 8th. I'm going to set up a meeting with uh, Jim Donison and or Sean Mulholland mm-hmm. and or members of this group with regard to uh, how we want to handle the RFP or non-RFP. Um, I'm going to get the two years of uh, liver utilities data by meter by month. And put that in SharePoint. Uh, I think that's all I've got on my list. Yep, that's all I recall. And I've got a um, follow up with Kim on my yes. list. Yes. Kim, and Cliff is going to talk with Kim to get the review and adjust the. Uh, Production data, production analysis data for the airport. Shading analysis, yep. Shading, right. So shading, not production. Right, but it allows you to extrapolate. I mean, yeah. what's the impact on production? Um, yeah. I, I, I just one other parenthetical note: the um, the density that you can fit on the All Earth trackers has increased greatly since um, the ones in Woodstock were installed eight years ago, because they're, they're only like seven, they're like 7.6 kW AC each, but um, they can be much higher than that now because the uh, PV panels have improved so much. Oh, yeah. Cool. Okay, and, adjourn. 1 p.m.? I'm going to adjourn. Second. All in favor? Chair votes yes. Woody votes yes. Pilo votes yes. And I'm doing the minutes on this, right? Uh, yep, I've got, I've got some notes I'll forward to you. Oh, great, the production data. Uh, I'm sorry, who voted to, did you get that? Who moved? Clifton. Is Clifton already gone? Yep, and then Woody seconded. I had a question for him, but so be it. Give him a ring. I bet he's available. All right. I'm going to stop recording. Okay, very good. You can't stop me from stopping recording. Sounds good. Thank you, guys. Bye.